Yo, what is good, everyone? Welcome to Crossover Arc 2024 with Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising. My name is Asi La Vista. I'm joined here by the one and only Jaitsu, and we got some great matches coming your way. Jaitsu, this top eight's looking pretty sick. That's what I'm saying. So for those of you guys who haven't stopped on by and hit that exclamation point bracket, who do we have headed up in this top eight? We got Wavy versus Tega for winner semis. The other side is going to be Artorias versus Prada. <laughs> and also, we got Freege versus Witch Hazel down in the loser side, and also Coach Steve versus Rock. So I am super excited to see it. Looks like our first match, uh, you know, Wavy versus Tega is probably going to be Cagliostro versus the Lancelot, right? But we know Wavy is someone who kind of kind of has a mastery over so many different characters in Grand Blue, right? So I'm wondering if there's a counter pick there if we're really rocking with the Cag. Lately, I feel like Wavy's just been rocking Cagliostro. Yeah, I feel I like so. there's a lot of more experimentation earlier on in yeah. the tournament scene, especially with like some of the TNSs, some of the uh, exactly. earlier WASD opens. But lately, it's been pure purely Kag, and yeah. she's been getting a lot of wins, bro. Just She's got a lot of TNS wins underneath her belt. She's exactly. got a lot of WASD opens uh, underneath her belt, so Same. she's seed one for a reason, and yeah. she's already faded to get over into Winner's Finals. We'll see yeah. what uh, Tega's got cooking, though, because I'm very excited to see if it's going to be Lancelot or even Percival. We've seen Percival yeah. before. Yeah, uh, Percival, definitely one of those characters that's like, oh, okay, going into Rising, you know, definitely yeah. very strong with the vanilla version of the game, but now in the newer version, a bit less valued, I got to say. But yeah. there are definitely still some strong Hello. players showing up with the Percy. We got Panda. Panda. Hell yeah, New York Energy. How are we feeling today? Tell Happy? the crowd what's good, Panda. Yeah. A little salty? Yeah. yeah. Who said yeah? yeah. 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 like, I'm salty, dog. <laughs> nah, you're lying. I know you're in here. <laughs> All right, before we start top eight, I just want to do like a little history lesson for you guys, all right? Oh, oh so we're going to learn today. Way Got my notes. Way back when Grand Blue first started, the very first tournament that happened here at OS was here. Was Super TSB. Super TSB 2020. 2020. It's true. That's right. And then what happened? Little TBT. I casted that. Ooh. COVID, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. That was literally but like three days after, after COVID oh, hit. God. Yeah. Y'all stuck around. Y'all continued to play through delay based. And we got rewarded. Mm. 2022, we had crossover arc. 2023, last year, we had the second year. And now we're here in crossover arc 2024 in a new generation, Grand Blue Rising. Let's go. Let's and we go. got a lot of fresh blood, and we got some old heads too that are still here showing that they mean business and they're not going out the door yet. So. We are going to introduce the top eight. And first up, new heads, Wavy! Yeah, dude, Wavy again. Especially sponsored yep. as well. Oh, oh she got fit. sponsored? Got yeah, I... shout out new heads. Oh, Picked that's up, right. Uh, recently but by also, the team there. Let's BLM, go. Dynamic focuses, Tego! Man, who needs the introduction pulling up as well. There he is. Yep. I was honestly worried where he was. Remember Tega getting a third at DreamHack Atlanta last year. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And now the sudden pick, seemingly that came out of nowhere, but still showed his stuff yesterday in Guilty Gear Strive. Artorias! That, that Johnny was sick yesterday, man. Yeah, right? I loved watching that. And I know that this player, yeah, this player, he had a rough start in the beginning. I'm sorry, she had a rough start in the beginning. She's trying to figure out how the new meta was, how everything works, 6XL. We've all been through there. We're still going through it. Sorry for you. This year, she's shown her stuff, and I honestly think that she's going to be a real threat. Please give it up for New Heads Prada! Another Sir. pick up from New Heads. Uh -huh. Big fan. Now that's the winner's that's side, eight. but we're not done yet we're because even though we got these players on the loser's side, they're still fighting, they're still biting, and they're still hungry. I Say want that. to hear you guys for free! Okay. Goat, goat. Now another one that's been a sudden, for a lot of people, a sudden surprise for the community. Because a lot of people thought, Narm sucks, what do you mean? <laughs> but this character, this player has shown that she could be top 10. I want to hear it for Oomphie's Witch Hazel! New York's finest. Yeah, always a fan of the Narmaya though. And we though. got the last two players here. I gotta do this for the homie. He's made a home through Marvel. He's made a home through KOF. Mm -hmm. Injustice 2. Mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 1. And he's taking your house and your money in Grand Blue. Please give it up 
for Coach Steve! Dude, that is like the legendary OG GOAT right there. Yeah. I love that he's been playing Grand Blue. And exactly. last but not least, again, this player, another top eight, means to get the money if they can, if she can. If not, she's ready to take some names. Please, I want to hear all of you for rocks! Oh. Had an impressive showing at Strive yesterday. So, Absolutely, got yeah. fourth with Bridget. Let's Kills get it with the Bridget. On the road. Let yep. me have Wavy and Tega first for winner's side. Oh, baby. Yeah. Let's get Crossover Rx started. Let's get it done. You already heard what he said, man. We got tons of action coming your way. That was the all eight players being introduced here. Yep. This gorgeous venue. You see people already like lining up to watch the stream. I remember exactly. we, were, we were waiting all day today, like out front. Yeah. And the stream was just like blank. The giant. Oh, really? screen. Okay, because okay. they're playing all the matches in the back. It's like, right, man, we're right. going to get these seats right now. A lot yeah. of my friends are like, we're going to claim these seats. Lock so in. that when yep. top eight starts, we're ready your to front rock. Front row. Exactly. Yeah. I see everybody in the crowd here super excited to watch some Grand Blue Top 8 here. They got the food, they got the drinks, and they are ready to game. Yeah, uh, they're right. going to start off with a hand warmer, by the way, just to, you know. Make sure everything's all good. Hey, my, my, dude, my hands are a little cold right now. That's it's freezing saying. outside in New York City. I don't know what the heck's going on with the weather, dude. I thought it was spring, but it's actually still winter. It's it's all over the place. I got to say, honestly, it's a little frosty out there, but we got to warm up real quick. You know, first match of the Top 8, I want to make sure all the buttons are all good and head in on into it. Yeah, so let's, from Wavy again, uh, reintroduction of these two players. Yeah. Cagliostro has won tons of tournaments underneath her belt. She's looking very strong just to take the whole thing. Meanwhile, facing off, facing off against Tega, uh, Prime Lancelot might be running the six this time around, has tons okay, of characters okay. underneath their belt. I mean, it's a kind of like a, if you were to play six, it's kind of like a fair transition, right? Going right, from Lancelot right. to six, I see exactly. that feels very normal. That's a very common pipeline. Yeah. Either way, kind of, you know, both of those rushdown characters, right? You know, one of them uh, a little bit more free form with the rotation of the skills, but either way, you're really trying to make your way on in there, right? But we did potentially for the button check, maybe just, uh, you know, switch it up on the offline mental. We did see the Vera lock in from Wavy. So, of course, we know that, you know, she has Vera in the pocket. Like yeah. you were saying, right, a lot of tournaments, you know, back to back and forth, we've been seeing a lot of the cut. So, we'll see if this is the real pick. I mean, ever since Rising, that's been like Vera's, like, home, right? Because yeah. Vera's always been like that character that can cook but needs that extra little bit of spice exactly. well now you just gave her the whole kitchen because she can go into that transformation mode yep. where she just like goes into install off of a command grab or off of landing a super and then she's just like a force to be reckoned with yep. having access to so many tools in her kit such as having like multiple air dash jumps like yeah it's a threat dude it's super tricky but definitely you know in certain matchups it can be easier or harder to try and land that initial command grab right but we're gonna do a quick button check once again to make sure everything is all good before we head into our first match of winners semis. Dude, ever since you like play the game online so yeah. much, because the that code's really good. Uh, you go back to offline, you forget that you have to like, oh yeah, we should probably button check, we should probably yeah, set right? our buttons. I remember my first offline tournament for this game. I was like, wait, how do I set the button? Yeah, <laughs> I, because like, you said it the first time. I, you're like, oh, actually, I forgot to have to like press the button and then like select yeah, yeah, yeah. it. You know? My opponent was just like, bam, 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 bam. I'm like, uh, yeah. that's this one, I think, because right? I only said it the one time online. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and you're just like, oh, my controller's not working. They're like, oh, you have to hit the PlayStation button. I'm like, uh, oh, I play word, on PC. Yeah. I don't think I have one. They like, <laughs> they Wait, reach over, you, they hit the button. They're like, you do have a PlayStation button, man. Come on now. There's no way you don't, dog. Yeah, right? You have Uno. It's installed in your Xbox no, button. <laughs> I don't have yeah. Uno. Man. You have it, dude. All right, and it looks like we uh, we have the buttons all mm. good here, just to make sure. Back on in. We also want to make sure that we got like the right profiles, yes, the right exactly. people's names aren't being interrupted too, because we actually had a misfortune yesterday for oh, really? uh, it, was, it was a guilty gear match going on, and it was like kind of down to the wire, yeah, and then yeah. someone's controller got disconnected. Oh and no, that's not They took the round. You know, you take the round. You always take the round in those yeah, situations, yeah, exactly. but you hate to see it because he had momentum when that happened. So yeah. it was just like I forget, it, it really I kills it, was. it for sure. So you always want to, especially because um, Wavy plays with the pad. So okay, pads, yeah. I feel like pads are more notorious for I've that happening it, yeah. because like if, if the wire like jiggles out a bit. Like yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. You know, I see sometimes with some of the leverless options as well. You know, it yeah. can, be, can be a bit finicky as well. So again, making sure before we head into, into this winner's side, right? The difference, you know, you don't want to be sent down into the losers this early. Uh, you really want to get that ticket into the winner's final side, secure that place in the top four. So anything we can do to make sure the system is all good, you know, and this is good for the rest of the players as well, make sure everything is all set up. Reboot that system, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Honestly, if you're sitting in winner's semis, if you get knocked down to losers, yeah. like, 
then you're kind of in a tough spot because if you lose again, it's like, cool. Getting fifth place in top eight from Winterside is like one of the worst feelings. So you've, yeah. you've made it to the top eight stage. Here you yeah, are. You made it to and you lose and then you both sets. You through top eight. It's like, man, come on. I was set up Bro, for I success. I did better than the seventh place guy, though, but like, it doesn't matter. It, I know. You lost twice, bro. Like, exactly. hey, hey, GG. Wrap you want to go farther for sure. Mm -hmm. So never, yeah, neither player want to be in that spot. So we got the system reboot coming yep. up here. Tega once more, you know, hasn't really been entering as many online tournaments. Yeah. Like, I haven't really seen them entering brackets as much. So very curious to see what they're going to bring to the table in the offline setting. Yeah, a lot of more so the, like, you know, offline grinding or, you know, I think there are a decent amount of, you know, really strong players who, you know, they see the abundance of online tournaments that we have, which is super sick to see, especially, you know, yes. going from delay to rollback, and it's almost like every day of the week, okay, there's another chance to try and prove your skills and get a lot of this valuable matchup and bracket experience. You know, but some people, they're just like, okay, I really want to focus my energy mm. into these long sets, these really targeted matchup-specific, you know, training sessions with people that I want to run down with the matchup notes, et cetera, et cetera. And they're just two different ways of training about it, right? Yeah. To really bring their best to these offline events. You're actually spinning up. There's, like, so many events out here, dude. Yeah. We got Wasdies on Wednesdays. Yeah. You got um, what? What is it? Paragon online. Yeah, pa Paragon Friday. Tina Saturdays. Paragon online on Fridays. Uh, Bum starting to do something on Tuesdays, I believe. Yeah. Like, there's just there's so many. We like almost every day of the week you can exactly. enter a tournament for this online. It's really cool to see the scene thriving too in that reg yeah. regard. Like, I entered a rank yesterday, and I found a match. Like, it was like fast. Like, yeah. you know, so. Like, it just works. It just works. It's very different from vanilla when you go into ranked. And it's like ranked died in like a week because people yeah. just go to lobbies and that place. Exactly. But now we're jumping into this match. This is what we expected here. Yep. Lancelot versus the Cagliostro. Wavy on the Cag, Tega on the Lancelot. Game number one, set one of the tournament. You ready for this, bro? Absolutely. Winner semis our first match of this top eight here. Going straight into the EX Seals. Tries to make some space with the 6-6 six, six elf. The immediate counter hit. Coming up, Tega. Yeah, I and mean, you saw the uh, the immediate try to go for like the little tick throw action yeah. real quick, just to try to apply a little bit of pressure. Now, Cag's entire Ooh. game plan is going to be about setting these traps down and applying so much pressure in the corner. And yep. unlike Stride, which I saw a lot of yesterday, Ooh. you can't break that corner, bro. You're no. stuck there forever. The wall does not break, but you can jump your way back on out, especially with the throw to once again push mm. back. Ooh. Oh, just the DP. That's 50 meter down for Wavy. I love that far heavy, gonna catch that jump and you get put into that blender immediately. Off to a fantastic start coming out from Wavy. Absolutely, strong first round. You guys can probably hear it on the crowd, Mike Stu Newhead going crazy for their newest pickup as well. All right, but not through, put to the air for the air stall. Nothing found on Tega though, finds that close L auto combo. Yeah, I, I was really a big fan of the, the bravery coming out from Tega. They're yeah. going for the close light real quick, just to try to, or just light in general. The count calls them out again. In bullshit, that's what you have to do. Whenever you see a CAG putting traps out like that, all you gotta do is hit her and they all go away. Exactly. It can be really risky to try and you know swipe them off the screen, right? If you're focused on the traps, then that gives CAG the opportunity to run up and try and counter hit you for it. But Tega coming in from the top rope here, spend the BP. I don't think you build up the 100 to cash out into the super just yet. All right, never mind, my fault. It's Lancelot, dog. What are you known. talking about? My man's got combos forever. He probably could have extended that a little bit longer, but regardless, you're gonna put him right back into the corner. One BP left to go. Gonna start taking 20% extra damage. That is the Wavy Classic. Wavy's been doing that since 2023. Just constantly runs on top of you, pushes you back into yep. the trap, and all because of that one little setup, the 6-6M, yep. that damage, that much damage right there. And you have no resources, no BP in sight, no meter in sight. You have to get, just get off with Lancelot. You know what? He's yep. a guy that can do it. Oh my god, and no BP in the tank means you don't have any opportunity for the Brave Counter and the Far H with 150% damage. Of course it's going to kill that first game over to Wavy. Dang, dude. The, the intense first game coming out. Wavy just kind of destroying that momentum that uh, Tega was trying to put out there. But Tega's yeah. coming right back in here. Put in some a lot of work and try to prevent him, uh, prevent Wavy from uh, building this rock, right? Because when yeah. she builds that rock, you got you got to be careful of that when it gets sent towards you. Yeah, scary, right? You have this safe special cancel option to try and escape. No, but instead using the UDP, Tega escapes the 50 meter. All right, 100 meter right now on yep. Wavy, getting called out by a lot of these structs. You're gonna have to be careful here because Ooh. of that, right? Ex. Uh, EX Throne can easily just reversal your way out of dodge. If anyone in this game has 50 meter, they can get out of any sticky situation. Yep. All right. No 50 meter spent, but we do spend the Brave Counter 2 BP apiece. 
Bro, they both super jumped Jesus. backwards, <laughs> just waiting for that opportunity. Yeah, mutual respect. Super jump into the ultimate seal. Caught out with the close TP. Another round for Wavy. And now it's set point. Dude, that was the mix of the century. You yeah. put that big little circle around them. It's like, what side am I going to once you go into that throw? No one knows. You put out Ooh. that decoy. You got to remember, this is a first to two. Yeah. So this could be over This could be over after the one more round. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, exactly. The strong anti-air bait coming off from Taker, right? We did super jump into the fastball. Avoids the 2-H, but no. does not avoid the damage coming up from Wavy. No. Pick up with the trap and once again, stuck in the corner. Wavy looking unstoppable right now. But finally, DP for the 50 meter. We just traded to escape the corner. All of that off of a close heavy. Dude, yeah. the biggest combo start in the century. Lancelot might have combos for days, but his damage is something to be desired. He'll build up the 100 meter, Yo. but not going to be able to convert it into a combo. Uses the BP as a brave counter just to relieve some pressure. Doesn't want to give any momentum left Ooh. to their opponent, but good reversal. Still 100 meter. This is very scary. We just do an easy bake up and we just throw out the projectile. This goes straight up into a tie up the rounds here again. It is still set point for Wavy, but I don't know. We're getting some wind and take of sales for sure. Okay, coming out one more time. Far age. We just do the simple jump, trying to bait out the little bit of reactions there. Delay from Tega. He wanted the anti air. Yeah, we wanted to pick up that spike into the trap behind it, but unfortunately, not going to find your mark. You are going to find the ultimate seal, though, every single time we see that 50 meters spent from Wavy. It just gets them so much screen control. And now it's just giving you a lockdown with another throw. Throw range. Dude, I don't see that EX seal from pretty much anyone except Wavy. And we're seeing all the mileage coming out here. Jumps right back in, comes in. Tega's at low health, bro. He's got to put this pedal to the metal immediately. Yeah, you got to fight for your life right now. One touch, any stray Omari coming up from Wavy. Ends your run. Waiting for the 50. Now we have 50 for the UDP. Careful the Golden Throne. Just feeling very brave. And he's just going to go for the brave counter to put you right Ooh. back out there. Oh, we got a hit, but no confirmed coming out. Another brave counter to release some pressure. Puts oh. you in the chip kill. And there it is. You top right on front of him. Wavy dominating that set. 2-0 over Tega, it moves on into winner's finals. You tried to escape, you knew the chip damage was lethal, so you had to get out of the way of the Golden Throne, but still caught out with the JH on the way down. Tega sent down into the loser side. Dude, that was unbelievable. You saw the use of the Brave Counters too, because yep. A lot of the time, players want to use Brave Counter yeah. just to relieve pressure. Exactly. But there's more to it that was going on there from Wavy. Yeah. Wavy was also using Brave Counters to do damage yeah. to put you into chip kill, which is one health. In this game, you can't die to chip unless you have one health. So Brave exactly. Counter can put you into that position. So once that happened, it's like, oh god, now it's now I'm fearing for my life. Even though I have, I have like, I have the pressure. Yeah. If they reversal me, I'm dead. Exactly. You know what's scary being Tega there, right? You're like, oh, I'm already low HP, so any hit kills. But not only that, once I start my pressure, because I know that Wavy has one or two BP in the tank, you know, going for this Brave Counter, especially with the life lead being so big, that extra damage percentage really does not matter, right? You're really just trying to seal out that chip damage situation, like you're saying. Yeah, so congratulations again to Wavy, taking a 2-0 victory for herself, securing yeah. her spot, at least a guaranteed a top three position. Yes. And there's a lot of money on the line here, man. $3,000 pot. That's what I'm saying. Shout out to Tarek for uh, donating a lot of his own funds towards this tournament. That guy is the GOAT. Exactly. And if you guys want to sweeten that prize pot for these players as well, giving you such amazing Grand Blue Rising action, you can stop by the Macharino as well and, uh, you know, put in a little bit of money to that prize pool. And, of course, we still have some codes remaining as well. And I'm sure you guys could claim that even before the next set. I believe in you. Stop on by login with any social media and claim those coupon codes. There's only 11 left, guys. We know you can do that. And also, yeah. if you're feeling even more generous, you can put some more in there. But, like, we're just happy you guys are here watching these matches. And I'm just yeah. happy to be here with you and, like, watching these tournament matches for top eight here at Crossover Arc 2024. Let's jump into our next match. Here. So we got Artorias versus against Prada. Ooh, okay, okay. So we're definitely going to be seeing the uh, C coming out from Artorias, right? It's really been putting a lot of strong results with this character as well. Prada, I think, has jumped back and forth between a few characters, but oh, the one that we mostly so know her for really is the Cagliostro, right? So I wonder if we're going to stick with the counter pick. But first off, we got a button check just to make sure everything is all good. Yeah. So with Prada specifically, she, I, I was looking up the, like the past two months what mm. characters she brought out in tournament. We've seen Cagliostro, Belial. Namaya, yeah. Six, and Lucilius. And okay. like that's just it's from the, the range. Just in the past two months, dog. So like she's got the range and she can easily put that into her. Her best result was a uh, second place out of last the open, uh, number twelve specifically. So yeah. she's looking to try to get that first place position. She's been in a prime position to do it, right? Being here in winners semis. Yeah. Let's see if we can make our way over to that winners finals. 
And then, uh, meanwhile, Artorius on the other end, we were talking about how we've been seeing a lot of results from him. Yeah. I feel like he picked up, sh uh, he was a little bit late to Rising, I think. I, I feel I like think he started so, yeah. He started entering tournaments for the first time, like, maybe a month ago, and was already seeing results. Like, he's already was playing Strive, right? Very uh, yeah, prominent exactly. Johnny. He goes, uh, he got seventh place yesterday for Strive. Yeah. But here today, like, he is, like, coming with the Siegfried. He's uh, won a WASD Open, got a second at last TNS. Yeah. Like, he is cooking something, and he's a... Soldier, you got to deal with. Like he is very yeah. prominent. I, I would not be shocked if he wins this, and then he and then he beats Wavy and goes into the grand finals. Like that, that exactly. would not shock me. I don't think it's gonna. Ha I, anything can happen, but that would not shock me if we saw that. Yeah, he has definitely exploded onto the scene as one of the prominent Siegfried players, right? But he's putting on into our first game here. Once again, we got Artorias versus Prada for the other side of Winner's Semis. And of course, as always, we're going to see Prada representing that Cagliostra. Seems yeah. to be the character that she uh, lands on. If it doesn't work out, maybe she goes to one of her other characters. But out the bat, Artorias is doing a fantastic job of applying so much pressure. That's kind of what this character has to do. Escape the corner with the 2U, but still gets caught on on the other side. Prada has lost so much health in the first 20 seconds of this match, but finally gets a trap set. Yeah, but for how long? It's also like right on top of you, so it's just like, at this point, the onus is on Prada to play aggressive, right? You're at the health de de deficit. Yeah, we saw that hesitation from Artorias there, right? Thought the 6XM would actually put us into the trap pressure, but gave Prada the opportunity to push you a little bit further over towards the corner. Old Beyblade does not find the mark, though, and with all the BP in the world, it's a clean kill for Artorias. Yeah, Prada was trying to go for something sneaky there. You saw that EX uh, Beyblade coming right in. We had the block punish coming out from Artorias yeah. immediately to convert it into a raging chain. And that's all she wrote. Round number two. There we go. Seal right on top. Dude, Artorias not afraid to start swinging at that mid range right with the trap above you because you're like, oh my god, the double class two, but finally the 2 H clean pickup for Prada. Oh my god, that was the sickest round. I, dude, the, the triple trap, the triple right. seal putting you right back into the corner. Wait, uh, this Prada right on top of her stuff. Again, pulling some more blocks. That's the Ooh. big overhead, right? Against Siegfried likes of that, you gotta interrupt that. Because yeah. if you block that, that's hella plus. Exactly. You're jailed into another button. It's scary. You're in the strike though situation. Oh. Speaking of strike, the big counter hit does not get the full confirm for Artorias. That was a mix up, dude. Thought it was gonna be a grab. Nah, son. I run up and do close H. Meanwhile, we got the super coming out to end the round, turn it into a 1-1 one, one score right now. Yeah, there we go. Tied up on the rounds. Round number three with the meat grinder. Let's see it. Yeah, playing a lot more passes. Yes, I'm sure he's definitely backed up, and we saw the anti-air opportunity. If there's one thing Cagliostra's want, it's disgusting. They want to be in the air. <laughs> they want to be in the air, J2. They want one thing, and they just want to bait out all of your anti-airs, right? You do 2H, <laughs> you miss. You do delay 2H, they do a second air stall, and now caught out with a 2L into Raging Strike. Okay, but just opting to keep the corner here for Prada. Slow it down a little bit. We're backing up another 6 XP. Ooh. Catches the spot dodge with the projectile. Going to turn into some juicy damage. We also have full meter. Baits out the reversal. Artorias, A little no. bit late, Artorias, but that's yes. okay. <laughs> he is shaking his head furiously right now. He's like, dude, I cannot be dropping this in winner's semis. Yes, I was able to bring the round back, but you know he's not happy about that drop. Artorias. He's got to lock in. No, Artorias, yes. <laughs> It was like, actually, it's so over, we're so back. Yeah, that, that literally, that, that graph. Pictured you know, like, exactly. Literally, that's exactly what it looks like. In, in my Ooh. brain, I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I'm peak depression. I am peak happiness. Like, that's exactly what happened. Game number two, our turn up 1-0. Ooh, nice. I like the spot dodge right through the bomb, but still nothing crowned from Prada here. Another spot dodge into the 5L, though. Let's get you a little bit more space. Okay, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit here on the side. Just do the meterless DP, a, a boon to have in this game, right? Sigrid being one of those characters that can easily go for the meterless reversal. Puts you right back into the corner. Arturius' specialty, but Cagliostro does have the ability to go for a reversal here upon wake up. We'll see if Prada is gonna be able to represent that option or is gonna hold the block right after this. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, right? It's scary to use the Brave counter because if you're wrong, you are gonna die off the next hit, right? With that damage multiplier, didn't even get a chance to use either defensive option. Caught you lacking Artorias on set point. Looking insanely strong. and deny Prada's advance to try to challenge um, uh, Wavy for the best CAG of yep. this tournament, right? They're just gonna kind of deny that opportunity. But Prada does have some momentum Ooh. here. We run up, we beat out the grab, we get a close heavy instead. Big counter hit, punish on top of that. Gonna use the trap to extend the combo even further. Happy Ooh. little reset. And we were spending both our BP to get out of there. 
exactly. You might as well, right? The BP deficit's so good for Prada right now. Checking in with the Raging Strike. Thinking, how am I going to try and escape? Not ready for the reaction check. Now it's two chats right in between. Quick little poke up with the 2L and then runs up with the 6XM to clear out the second trap too. I will say, Prada is one hit away from getting this victory, but if Atreus gets a significant hit, oh, okay, there it is. We were out of BP there for yep. a second. That was going to be 50% more damage. That was scary. Yeah, it could have been one touch on both sides. Obviously, Artorias needed a counter hit with the zero BP situation, but would have been possible. Caught him with a TP on the other side. Are you kidding me? What, catching that confirm right afterwards, Prada playing out of her mind. Gets called out by the 6 p one more time. That dash light is so, so good. Yep. Ooh, there you go, tries to go for the shimmy. Prada really has not been, uh, you know, biting on any of these run-up backdashes, but is going to find the hit with the TP. Okay, coming back in, catches the far heavy, yeah. puts you right back, shark far medium, going to get it one more time. Gets the traps, the damage is starting to climb bit by bit. One more grab, mix up, Ooh, we block seal. those. Yeah, chilling out, was not afraid of the throw. Send out the firewall, caught out in the sky. Oh, falls so fast. Don't oh, have the opportunity no. for the air block. Well, you can't block. Them and That's Ooh. so tough. You run up there again. We saw Terry's with one health. You can't block anything. You gotta yep. avoid either a jump, a spot dodge, or roll. Yep. Any of those things would have done. But unfortunately, we're gonna see Prada take away that game from our turns and turns into a final game in this race to two. There we go. Game number three, fighting for our lives here in winners semis. Okay. 6L, immediate firewall. And you know. Nothing found on the block, but at least we pushed Prada all the way over to the other side. Okay, okay once more, we gotta play a little bit safe here. Yep. Those traps are still, if we finally get the hit, gets rid of the seals, yep. puts you back into the corner. Some more damage starting to climb from Artorias. Let the man cook. Nothing that found up the firewall, beats out the anti-air with the delay. You know, that air cell off of the UDP in the air. Prada could have been conditioning Atreus since the beginning, like, oh no, you hit me with the anti air. Yeah, no, yeah. and then like started like it's gonna be safe. But now Artreus doesn't even need the anti-air. We're just gonna spend the BP, spend the meter. Uh this yeah. Not no animation required. Oh, I was like, wait, hold on a second, it's Siegfried, I forgot. Yeah. I was thinking, yeah, and then I realized we took out the one BP as well for the little extra damage on top, and now it's set point for Artorius once again. And right back in here, throws the seal on the ground. We're just gonna let that reversal rip. No meter required. Oh, look at these six, three six six L's in a row. The oh double, the dash God. lights coming in, in clutch. Make our way over. Talk about dash momentum here. Speaking of momentum, definitely in Artorias' side. About to have the 100 meter. Bates out the DP. We are not missing this punish today. 100 meter in the bank. Raging strike available, Artorias. Do not drop this. This is your ticket into winner's finals. That's all she wrote, dog. That's gonna be denying Prada that advancement to winner's finals. And we're gonna see him have to fight against yet another CAG yep. later on. Dude, that was a sick set. Artorias preventing the CAG Ditto winner's finals, but definitely there were some signs of life coming out from Prada, right? A really strong game number two where it was like, oh, like you were saying earlier, right? You know, we baited out going for these two H's where they were getting so much damage and getting so much reward off of it as well. And then going for those air stalls that really had Artorias on the back foot, but putting in a little bit more delays, waiting for it, was able to seal out game number three. Yo, that replay was kind of sick, right? right? Because they were clashing a little bit. They even yeah. clashed on the grab. But then you notice that Artorias kind of got a little bit ahead of himself. Right? I was like, yeah. I, I can't get a hit. I'm running. Exactly. jump and then got called out by the answer that's yeah. okay he was able to clean up that set move on into winners finals but guys we're done with the safety rounds right it's true the people we saw lose they're still in bracket yeah not anymore we're in losers sevenths now we're trying to fight for our lives here if you lose these sets now you're going home with a seventh place finish it's going to be a handshake and take off i don't think you even get a little bit of that seven uh three thousand dollar pot you feel me Oh yeah. And speaking of, you know, losers quarters, the first players that we're going to be seeing up are going to be Coach Steve versus Rox. So, of course, another Siegfried headed up to the stand. You guys mm. know him. You love him. Coach Steve. But, of course, Rox has also really been tearing it up at, you know, both online and offline events yes. with the Grimnir and, of course, the Cagliostro, which I think a lot more people know her for as yes. well. So I'm also, excited to see it. She placed fourth yesterday on the Strive Tournament yeah. using Bridget. So, like, she's got a lot of stuff cooking. Yeah. She actually said she has to leave at, like, 7 o'clock. Oh, so, so she's she trying to speedrun it She's right trying now. to okay. speedrun this. That's 
they're not doing button checks. She's like, no, I'm good. She literally came up to me. It was like, should yeah. I just DQ, you think? And I'm like, no, I just oh, we want to see the, the matches. Run. You know, hey, if they can't beat you, then that's on them. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Don't DQ like, until you have to. We want to yeah. see how far you can get in the middle. You know, it's a terrible least. feeling when you beat someone. Yeah. Like, you DQ against the next. That oh, loser's like, come no. on. This dude sent me out just a DQ. I can't believe Word? it, but it's all Word? good. Oh, okay. So it looks like we're locking into the Grimnir, and this is no button check, right? So we are committing to it. I know Rob okay. has really been working on this character for, you know, the past one or two months now. Yes. So I'm excited to see it. So Grimnir is a character that I feel like the community has just kind of decided is not good. Yeah. I think they're broken. And that's only because of SKD. The thing is, if you, you guys got to yeah. play against SKD's Grimnir for 10 games, and you will understand this character is actually broken, and no one's playing this character like they're supposed to be. The I'm Every so time scared. I hear SKD, I just think of the you can react. Dude, you like don't understand. You don't understand. He's He was here in the venue yesterday, so yeah, like, he, he was, was showing he was people. Out. Like It's disgusting. Grimnir is actually gross. Yeah. All right, heading on into it. Losers quarters. Once again, we got Coach Steve on the Sieg versus Rox on the Grimnir for game number one. Man, the set begins. Gonna be the sick reverse game. So Grimnir, a character we don't really see too often, like I was saying. Yeah. Very zany character is kind of unorthodox, right? She's all he's all about like putting out the seals on the on the on, in the air yeah. and being able to get air dashes out of those. Like right there. The EX puts all four of them immediately. Whoa. And you can do oh something like that. Like this, spin out the ends here, just like you said, you know. Rox definitely one of these players who is not uh, unaccustomed to playing these tricky mm. characters, right? You were saying Guilty Gear Strategy plays the Bridget, and of course, you know, for Kag as well, but just making such good movement of the air dashes with the seals. But once Coach Steve is finally able to lock you down in the corner, you're going to be eating a lot of damage for him. Yeah, Rox is eating so I mean, there's one thing Sigfried can do. It's going to be just deal out that damage. I don't care about your gimmicks. This might even kill. Oh, no. Oh, I really thought it was. <laughs> Dude, I was waiting for it, but Rox is still going to be able to survive. Oh. We get the counter hit. Hold on a second. Trying to push it back. But the Brave Counter going to put you in the chip range. That's what I'm talking about. If you got so much BP and their yeah. health is low, you Brave Counter not to relieve pressure yeah. to put them in the chip kill. Exactly. And that's such a scary situation at the mid range, right? Because you have the ultimate firewall to, you know, try and go a little bit slower, bait out the spot dodge, or the EX bomb, which is so fast and you have to react so quickly. But Psycho Crush is going to bring us over to the corner, set the crest. Do we go for a fuzzy? Oh, it's the 2L. Yeah, you gotta be on the lookout. And those things are still active, so what that does is it makes the combo extend even longer with Grimnir. Yeah. And because it was such a long combo, we were able to reset it yeah. into another old seal. Grimnir's yeah. nutty, dude. Alright, stuck up in the corner once again. I mean, we've seen Coach Steve come back in that previous round. Let's see if we can keep up the momentum here. Another big super coming out gonna eat about half of that health gonna Ooh. use the seal to try to get out we block the brave we counter block, so he loses yeah. bp you're still minus but at least you don't get you know knocked far away exactly Ooh, no bp on the side of rocks can't escape this unless you have a strong read to escape oh this is bad we're using bp now to try to put you in the chip C might do it oh. one more time we'll have to wait and see rocks wanted to go to the corner because that's where the crests are right exactly yeah uh oh chip is on the table oh. we get the air to air the JL, the rising air to air, like you said, just to knock you out of the sky, says, no, no, no. I'm not waiting on the ground for the 2H. You already outsmarted me the one time. Let me meet you where you're at. And now it's game one over the Coach D. Something I'm noticing from Rox, by the yeah. way, is that she continually goes for the uh, the EX version of the crest. So yeah. it puts all four of them out down at once. That does put on a cooldown. So if you have to go for like the light or the medium versions instead, you can kind of spam them a little bit longer. So you yeah. can actually use them whenever Ooh. you need them. It's just the, the nice instant use of it is so good. And Rox is getting a lot of mileage out of it. Yeah, ran up right next to the seal, so you were able to get the conversion off of that instant overhead. Now we have Coach Steve in the corner, 100 meter apiece. We block it all, that's... Oh, big, juicy anti-air coming out here. The problem is there's no crest right next to you, so Rox can't get that much damage, yeah. unfortunately. Oh, but there we go off the old Psycho Crusher, just spinning all the way from the other side of the screen. We should be able to kill your Rox. No, just barely oh, not enough. No! That match is too well on Are the other dead? side. No. There's no way. No. There's no way. You're out of BP. You spent it all. You're taking 50% more damage, and that's why you explode. That's such a tragedy. Coach Steve, the man who lived and the man who's on set point looking to send Rocks home at number seven. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I feel like we're falling apart right oh, now, no. though. We saw a raging strike completely yeah. whip. Coach Steve putting Rocks right back into the corner. You got to find that mental to get back into this fight. Cresser back on the table. That allows oh. you. Oh. Was oh, Steve just no. jumping that whole time? That's what I'm wondering. He we went all the empty air dashes into the raging strike. Coach Steve was still able to find the mash out. It's like, I know you want to go in the air. I see those crests. 
all of these 6 6 M's coming out from Steve. A little close to trying to catch those. Boosts. Rock's doing it. Here we go. Yep. This is the Grim Near special of the Super Skybound Arts variety. Throw the rose at him. Exactly. Send it a little No, really not a lot of help for Rock, so any small of is going to be able to kill. We're looking for the chip damage. Angle caught out of the hair dash, and it's Coach Steve taking it 2 0. But again, congratulations to Rock's making it to top eight and out at number seven. Seventh place with a character we don't see in top eights anymore. Yeah. The Grimnir Extraordinaire. I know Diaphone's looking at this and be like, exactly. man, maybe I should pick that character back up. Yeah, know? right? <laughs> Diaphone, you know, going through the entire cast of characters, says, who am I going to, you know, stop on by with TNS today, right? Yeah. But, yeah, again, another great showing coming out here from Coach Steve to move on to Loser's Quarters. Insanity. We'll take one more a little bit of a look right now. This is when Steve was just applying a lot of pressure. Put down the seals. This is when oh, we zoom, zoom, zoom. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, this was so yeah. sick, man. <laughs> that was like literally the first thing you do. So you like you throw out your trump card like immediately. Yeah. You know, it's like I'm gonna beat out that anti-air. <laughs> yeah, you show it early and you're like, all right, you gotta be a little careful about all these crests, right? But you know, once Steve was able to find an answer to that, oh, okay, let me just wait out for the two H. Or also what we saw a lot, right? Take to the skies with the JL. I'm seeing people call it the Nair in the chat. You know it has that similar kind of energy about it, right? <laughs> the Nair. You know, and just uh meeting you where you are. <laughs> so that all of these tricky ways to try and use these crests and you know switch up that air momentum, really weren't getting too much for rocks by the time, you know, round number two, game two came around. Yeah, it's very funny that he gets called the Nair. Adam yeah, Arthur, right? Because, like, we, we got spot Smash dodge, energy. we got yeah. rolls, I you know? know. Like, why not throw Nair in there? We just start calling exactly. that nonsense? No, absolutely not. But we got our last set of top eight of round one All right. to come up. Losers quarters, it's going to be... Dun, 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 dun. We got... Oh, I think this is going to be Freege versus Witch Hazel. So, yes. Regent, looks like we're going to be having another Siegfried back up on the stage. And of course, if y'all have seen any of Witch Hazel, you will know she is rocking the Narmaya, heading on into Losers 8th. Yeah, Freege coming up to the bat here to try to get some work in there. Meanwhile, Witch Hazel, like you said, been doing it all with the Narmaya, yep. putting in a lot of work with this character. Got second at WASD Open number 13, yeah. so no stranger being in Grand Finals, you know? All right, let's see. Both of these players looking to lock in right now for game number one. I don't think it's a button check. I think they're just going to go in. Oh, no, it is. Okay, oh, right. Okay, yeah. They usually give me the signal. I didn't That's see the signal this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Make sure everything is all good. Again, you know, we're in the loser side, right? Fighting for our tournament lines. So yes. Just got to make sure everything is all good. Absolutely. Especially when it's your first time on this tournament setup, right? I'm right here. So, again, this is going to be yet another sick breed, right? Very yep. common character because he's basically. Do you want to play a Shoto? Do you want to play a good Shoto? Yeah, yeah. yeah here, there you go. You play Siegfried. You know, like he's he's got like everything a Shoto wants, and then more on top of that, he got exactly. give him a command grab. He's got stances. He's got Rekkas. Anything yeah. you want, and like he he's <laughs> he's got damage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can he feel a little straightforward at times? Yes. Yes. But the straightforward options that he uses have such great range. A lot of great reward as far as damage comes out. So you know, you're not you're not hurting for any trickiness or creativity here. But we are heading into it. The other side of our losers' quarters. Once again, we got Freege versus Witch Hazel. No. And speaking of stances, this is a character that's got it in Armaya, yeah. having the two different stances, the sheath and the unsheathed, right? When it's sheath, it takes a little bit longer for those attacks to come out, but with the sheath that's out there, come out a little bit quicker, right? You want to be able to switch between them. You get different skills and different stances as well on yeah. different cooldowns, mind you. Exactly, so yeah. it's all about just switching between those stances on the fly, which you're seeing a lot of already. Oh my god, and the U-Flip, it is such a good use of 50 meter for uh, Narmaya, right? You get a brief period of invulnerability. You air stall, and it's one of her strongest starters as well. We're going to reset it to the ultimate Setsuna, cash out on a little bit more damage. There we go. Already starting off insanely strong right now. Witch Hazel trying to call out a, pu a punish there. We saw the whip punishes the attempts coming out. The far ages were common. But unfortunately for her, Freech finds the opening, uses the die to just say, hey, I was in the corner. You're in the corner. Exactly. Coast to coast, the full screen hit grab. Now it's the back throw incident coming out here. The stride is showing, and Hazel takes the first round. The simple close light, dog. You run up there. It's a simple strike throw mix-up. That's all it is. You run up there. You think a grab's coming, so you push your button, and the light just eats you alive. Exactly. We're seeing Hazel really lean into a lot of these throw baits, right? You know, run in deep and then go for the close H. Try and bait out, you know, a fuzzy throw attack attempt, but tries to go for the mini shimmy. Nothing found for Freed, so we just go into a simple triple attack overhead. Look at all these crouching lights coming out on the block. There yeah. we go. Brave Ooh. counter. Good interruption. Yeah. Imagine being that brave. I'm saying, right? Just send out the far L, and now we're catching up on so much EX flip into the super. And now it's one touch for Freed. I think we're, no, we are in throw range with the MVP, but we escape with a back throw on the raging strike attempt. 
Witch Hazel is trying, trying to play a little disrespectful yeah. there. You saw it going for a raging strike as an Oki option yeah. is like the, yo, I caught you day one with that exactly, nonsense, yeah. you know? <laughs> you see the deep breath coming out from Hazel too. She's like, right, I've got a nice, but I gotta, I gotta bring it back a little bit. Let's slow it down. Yeah. Rock the MVP to escape some pressure. And Witch Hazel on set point here, trying to get the top five. That's gonna be a big punish coming out from Fridge. We're spending the BP on the Raging Train to make it go even further. And we're already at one BP left, but hey, we got momentum. Yeah, spent a lot. You know, we had already... Oh, no! Big Bay coming out here from Breach. Still shouldn't be able to kill even with the Raging Strike. No 100 meter for the super on deck. But now you're in throw range up against the corner. Finds a mash out 2L straight into the super. We're gonna go to sleep real quick while this, like, long cutscene <laughs> plays out. So much damage on the table, especially when you have no BP left exactly. on top of that. 3 BP to 1, you're in a bad spot. You do have meter to play with if you want to. If you want to go for a reversal Ooh. sub kind. Oh my god! You saw that? The run up chop? The sword stance close age? Man lost his life. Zero BP in the tank and now it's set point for Witch Hazel. Going back for some more blocks on top of that. Throwing out the little slab, double slash. Not going to be able to find its mark. A lot of these close, medium, close heavies coming in. Clutch it, apply some more block strings. But right now, like you're just seeing a lot of blocks until finally beat out yet another grab. There's such a fear of getting grabbed coming yeah. out from Fridge, and uh, Witch Hazel is just dominating that again and again. Yeah, I think what we're seeing, you know, Fridge kind of freezing up. Oh, is able to find the far L on the Raging Strike attempt. You know, Witch Hazel really just trying to check the reactions here. Can tell you're a little bit nervous. Finally, trying to get a little bit more pressure here. Okay, damage bump right in your face. That was scary. Yeah, right. Let's we'll see if we can do is just eat a little bit of health to make that damage go a little bit higher. Ooh. He already dishes out so much, but right now, Witch Hazel yeah. playing pretty tough. Ooh. Oh, we got a clash. 2P yeah. immediately. I wonder if there was exactly. like a misinput coming out from Witch. Maybe trying to go for a DP. Yeah, I'm wondering. Oh, but speaking of, what's the DP rock? No punish from Breach, and not only that, gets caught up with 6XL on the other side. It's one touch. Witch Hazel just needs any hit with no VP in the tank. No, no shots. Oh, yes. dodge that. Are you kidding me? Witch Hazel dominating that set, taking out Breach for seventh place, moving on into losers. Quarters. Shout out to Fridge for getting seventh place here at this stacked tournament, man. Like there, we have so there's like 70 people here. Like that, there's a lot of people that showed up to this venue, man. I was shocked. Yeah, right. Shout out to Crossover Arc, bringing some of the greatest talent, you know, in the tri-state area and also from outside, right? You know, a lot of people flying in as well to show some love. It has been a, uh, a sick time. Definitely a stacked bracket as well. You know what else is stacked? The merch store, which you guys can pick up some uh, Crossover Arc merch pull it up here guys look at these mugs if you guys want coffee you want tea or even just a little bit of water personalize your setup stop on by the crossover arc store at impurist.club brother that siegfried mug is <laughs> looking straight fire yeah i know rowlett be looking at that i'm saying yeah i, I saw them in the <laughs> chat too cheering on the siegfried i mean yeah, she, if you want some great, merch to rock along with it i have the anila one and the kuan one as well they're yep. uh they're very great i gotta say yes big fan of these mugs you guys want to orbit it not only are you getting a sick mug out of it yeah it helps support uh supports the uh tournament scene so exactly. we're hoping you guys come through and help uh put some money towards this thing because we already know a lot of the organizers here put a lot again three thousand dollars on the line here at this new york city tournament very stacked tournament did a lot of pools today yes. also tons of other anime games that were played here yeah you know, we're not even like the biggest tournament. That's, that's, that's crazy. what I'm saying, right? This Grand is like, so <laughs> stacked, and it's not even the biggest tournament over here. We're at a Uni right? Two tournament, bro. Yeah, like, that's exactly. What we're, <laughs> like we're just, we're guests right now. Yeah. <laughs> And it's still such an amazing time. So if you guys want to support, once again, Impurist.club, if you want to pick up some of that merch for the coffee mugs. And also, if you want those same designs as t-shirts, you know, maybe drip coffee isn't your thing, but you want to up the drip, of course they have the shirt designs as well, Impurist.club. Make sure to stop on by as we head into our next set. And who do we have up next? Is that Coach Steve coming up so. to that? You already know, my and man, Tega Coach Steve. Well. Coach Steve with the... Siegfried fighting yes. against Tega with the Lancelot. Ooh, kind of like okay, a okay. canonical match, if you will. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Even Already. if it goes Percival, it's still canonical. Right? The lore, the lore of the Dragon Knights goes so deep, bro. The Knights of Old. Yeah, per, uh, Siegfried uh, was blamed for the murder of his old king. And uh, what was it? Lancelot believed them and yeah. thought he did it. And then it turns out, so there was other things at work here, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> they some, they got like some that. lore behind it. There's definitely some emotions it's going into It's a sick side wise. story. I'll tell you what. All right. Or Seagmir. Mm, I feel like Tega is pretty confident in the Lancelot here, right? You know? I don't think we... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Are we All doing right, the zero, mirror? Maybe spitting. My fault. Bro, does he just play the Dragon Knights? Is that what it is? Maybe. We, we got Lancelot, we got Percival, and now we got Siegfried. You know he's looking at Vayne April 2nd. You yeah, know right? he's looking at Vayne. Tega looking back at the crowd like, guys, 
Is this the way? Is Do we see Mirror right now? Dead ass though, I cannot wait for Vayne. Yeah. I, I, I you know, if you guys have seen the uh, the new updated gameplay trailer, hopefully uh, you guys are excited. I have loved Vayne since 2019 when I first played the. I played. That's when I first got into the Gacha game. Ooh, okay, and okay. I I was introduced to this character, and at first yeah. I was like, who is this clown? Like, I, 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 I wasn't really <laughs> Look at into his it. Dude. And then I got into his like sp specific individual stories, yeah. and he's like. He's such a good guy, man. He's just so happy, so nice, yeah. so loving. So I've been a grand man in this game because I'm so vanilla and basic. <laughs> but I've been waiting for Vayne. But when I our cannot favorite Dragon Knight Himbo, you know, finally makes his way out to the scene, that's where we'll be. Yes. And there's a trailer out for him now. They finally showed some gameplay is, for him. Yeah. It came out, yes, last night. I watched it for the first time this morning, dude. Yeah. He's literally got a super that sends his opponent into the stratosphere. He just <laughs> yoops and, like, tosses Take a trip to space real quick. Yeah. Man, it is such an exciting time to be a Grand Blue player, right? Obviously, we have the whole roadmap of characters as well. I think recently we just heard that not only is there going to be Psy Games Cup in 2025, but there's also going to be the official Arc World Tour for Grand Blue alongside of it. So, I don't know, Austin. I know you like this game a little bit. You know, I'm a yeah, yeah, decent yeah, yeah. Grand Blue fan as well so i'm we, super excited to see it hopefully we'll see you guys at those future events as well yeah i cannot wait for that sir i mean it, it was it was fated to happen exactly right? yeah. grand blue's already at evo this year it's gonna be at evo japan yeah. next month so it's got tons of tournaments coming up combo breakers another uh, big uh, yeah. big event dream hacks down the line like yes. there's so ceo i like they keep coming there's so many events grand blue is bigger than it's ever been and it's because of the good netcode and it's because of how strong the scene's been back exactly. when it was on delay base Neko. But enough about reminiscence. We got to get into the match. It's going to be Lancelot versus Siegfried. Take on the Lancelot. Coach Steve, as usual, on the Siegfried. There we go. Battle of the Dragon Knights headed into loser's quarters, fighting for their tournament lives. Once again, we get the light gorilla blade, which is all the way over to the corner. Oh my god, immediately out the gate, the 2L. Gonna open you up really quickly, and then if you know about Lancelot, he's got one thing cooking, and it's a big combo coming your way. There we go, caught up with the 6 6 sense. We see this a lot from Coach Steve, right? Yes. At the mid range, checking you if you're looking for a back walk to try and maintain that space, but finally lets the UDP rock. Spends a 50 meter for it, too. He is not scared to check you with that 6 6 no. Like, he always be going for that because it pokes from like almost full Whoa. screen. That was scary. I thought we saw the spot dodge on the Brave counter there, but still, Coach Steve. Trying to even up this health lead right now. You got 100 meter, but how are you going to use it? Caught out with the 2U. And we're taking you right back to the corner from full screen. We have meter. We're trying to bait out something, whether it's a brave counter or a reversal of yep. some kind. Catches Ooh. the jump with the dash light. Puts you right back into the corner, and you are about to explode. <gasps> Never mind, it wasn't enough. Oh, I wonder if another close L would have been able to reach there, but Coach Steve thinking about it. Tega brings the round back from the brink of defeat. Look at that face. Like, oh. <laughs> you know me. You know what Heartbreaker know. for Steve, dog. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah, Coach Steve not too happy about that one. So immediately trying to bring the second round in his favor with a counter hit to H. Got some more combos coming your way. Auto combo right on the block. After that third swing, you just got to have to give up your turn if you're not going to commit to a special of any kind. Yep. Ooh. There you go. Very projectile immediately caught out with the 6XL. It's tough to try to challenge that, right? When a projectile is right in your face like that, you saw Steve try to go for Ooh. it, but oh my god, just the small little shimmy gonna bait out that grab. This is looking like a wrap for Steve. Yeah, draining this BP doesn't give you any extra damage, but the minimum damage off the super should be enough to take game one here for Tega. Tega off to an insane start against Steve. You know, if you were if you were like a betting man, a lot of people probably would have put the win here on Steve. Like I people think so, are yeah. people are looking for Steve, but Tega's been putting in a lot of work this weekend, and it, yeah. it's definitely showing. Right, going starting off in winner's side of things, now guaranteed at least the top five, looking to get top four at least if we keep the momentum up. Yeah, speaking of momentum, right? I feel like dropping that first round definitely, uh, you know, a big mental setback for Steve. But trying to bring it back here as we head into game number two. Tega back up against the wall, about to build the 50 for that UDP, but instead spends the brave counter. Still brought back into the corner, though. Where are you going to grabs? Do we see a third? Do we see a third grab? Yeah, are we gonna see it? Me when I get you? No, we're just gonna walk in right out of the corner. Spot dodge a little bit too early. The flame wall. A little are bit too slow, too active. Are we spending it all? Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't think it kills. Save it for the last touch. Okay, run up UDP, it's all good. You still have so much health in the bank. I don't think Steve believed in that third Raging Strike, but it Ooh. might have got the kill. We find the hit, Brave Counter, we are out of BP. We just let it rock, it's gonna chip kill, right? You have to spot dodge at that yeah. point. And you've mentioned it so many times, right? The Brave Counter when your opponent is just barely out of chip range, get the plus six or the knockdown as well, and then put them in that checkmate situation where if they're not perfect about their spot dodges, about their rolls, they're gonna lose to the chip damage. So Coach Steve, one round closer to tying it up. 
Catching the jump right in front of you. Brave counter to give you give yourself some breathing room. Ooh. Baits it out. Tries to go for the attempt. Grab eats an icicle for his troubles in the process. There you go. Back dash yourself into the corner. Gets caught up by the tip of the U Gorilla Blade. But awkward hit. Hey, got not ready to confirm. Yeah, that's like the Lancelot special, right? Impulse drive coming right into your face from full screen. You got me on the yeah. lookout for it. We are trying to mix <laughs> Steve, and Steve is unrelenting with his defense. Oh, oh my god, dodged through the U Gorilla Blade, so we're actually able to find the back throw off of it as well. Tied up on the HP, tied up on the BP. So even right now, just looking for this final hit. Lancelot's a very tricky character for being able to escape it. We see those two 6 6 M's one more time. That type of, the reason he does that is he wants to force the opponent to stop moving. Yeah. Because you have to crouch block that. Exactly. And because yeah. of that, it gives Steve the opportunity Ooh. to go in there. But Tega just lets it rip to reversal special. You saw Siegfried smiling in the ice like, I'm so proud of my son. He put this bro in the iceberg like he was the avatar. That is crazy, <laughs> dog. Tega with a smile. He said, yeah. You know how it goes. All right, Tega, set point here. Just needs one more win, but Steve is not going to give it up that easily, dude. That anti-air goes above the screen and beyond. Back down to the ground, back to your room for you. Walk out, catches you with the step kick, Coach Steve. The spacing on that was incredible oh, from yeah. Steve because that's normally unsafe that close, but because Tego was trying to get a punish on it, he yeah. got a whiff punish instead. Exactly, walked back just a little bit, avoided so much and got so much damage off of it. Even when Coach Steve back up against the corner, we're still pretty ahead here. Goes for the Sword of Damocles, the air cell, bait out the DP, and Coach Steve ties it up 1-1. One, one. We got a game three. They're we, both smiling, they're having a grand old time. Bro, we're in New York, dude. Like That's just, that's all it's gotta be. Yep. It's all love. I love this scene. I love New York City so much. I love the tri-state area, man. Yeah, right? Everyone's They'll so chill. They'll talk each other before and after the game, but in the middle, they're having a grand old time. Game number three of Loser's Quarters. Okay. Goes for the Unga Bunga immediately, putting Tego right back into the corner. Yep. Gets the hit confirmed, converts it into a raging chain, lets that damage go even further and further. There you go, frame kill with the double close out with. Or EX projectile right in your face, goes for the low, you Gorilla Blade. Got some more auto combos coming out. Pulls you right back into the corner after the wreck up. Yep. Puts you with a grab. Is it going to be another one? We do not even give you the opportunity. We're going to go for the Brave Counter instead. We blocked that one instead, so you're not going to get any sort of pressure right afterwards. Dude, a lot of two L's coming out from Tega. Grab by the collar. Coach Steve, no BB to his name. 100 meter, though. Are you going to spend it on the old skills or just go for a one-hit super confirm? This is scary because Steve has no BP left. Yes, it's one touch for both of them, even though the life leads are so different. The tip of the Gorilla Blade, but instead, <laughs> run it back with a super coach, Steve. Now, on set point. Dude, Tego is so close to being able to get this set when the tables have been turned on him. Steve is starting to play out of his mind, throwing out the full screen projectile. Blade Impulse comes in one more time. We got a big punish coming out, starting off with a close heavy. The MDP rock, but rocked all the way over to the corner once again. Tega with a strong start here. Yeah, and that, we, got, we saw a wall bounce, so it's going to go even further. Like, that was a lot of health already gone coming out from Steve. Going for the Rekka doesn't even give him the opportunity for the mix. Going to opt to go for the Brave Counter instead. Yeah, we saw the spot dots trying to bait out the Brave Counter. Nothing found from Tega, though. Just holding on to this BP. You're so far ahead. Baited out the Sword of Damocles, too. So able to get a light confirmed there. Chip away at Coach Steve's help. Oh, we're letting oh. it rock with the, the ultimate version of that. Okay, uh, another brave counter coming out. Tega looking to try to open up this defense, but Steve is so unrelenting with these blocks. And in fact, even found an opportunity to take his turn. Yep, there we go, single Rekka. Escaped with the brave counter, but still stuck up against the corner. Tries to go for the throw bait fastball. One more BP spent. I thought that was going to be a grab. I, I got know. so scared, but now Steve drags him right back to the corner. One BP on both sides of thing. Timer is starting to move back, and we see another heavy landing. It's Mark. Is this going to kill? I'm pretty sure you're dead, and he spends the last BP. Coach Steve taking the set from a 1-0 deficit and moves on into loser semis, but hey, give it up for Tega, man putting on a fight of his life at a fifth place finish today. Out at number five, amazing work there. And I mean, like we said, right? We were saying, oh man, you know, off of dropping that one round, can't be too good for the mental momentum, but that's the mark, the hallmark of such strong players, right? When these shenanigans happen, when these crucial drops occur, the biggest skill is to be able to reset that mental, bring it back for game number two and three, and get that reverse sweep. So it's going to be uh, Coach Steve moving on to lose your semis. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm looking at these win quotes for right now. You guys can't uh, see it. They're kind of toxic, right? No, 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 this one's like oh, kind this of one's up, this one's uplifting, bro. Okay. So if we just basically tell him, hey, don't be discouraged, bro. Just keep that. You should be proud of how far you've come. You know, like that, that's bro, such he said, a cool... keep your head up, King. Yeah, keep your head up, up King, bro. Here's your crown. You dropped this, dog. <laughs> you dropped this uh, crown emoji, bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's so good. And I mean, the you know, the Dragon Knights, right? They're fighting for their lives out there, but it's all friendly sport at the end of it. And that's kind of the vibe over here at Cross of Rock, right? We're fighting to try and do our best, but you know, when we're losing to the best of the best, fighting for our lives, making it to that final game, final round, who can really be sad about such amazing Rainbow Blue action? Not me. I'll tell you that much, but we got, we got guys, we got to keep on trucking here. We got four more players left in this bracket, man. So many more left to come up here. I think we're sticking around with the loser side of things, I'm yes. pretty sure. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we got the other side of loser's quarters. So up on the stand, we got New Heads Prada versus Oofy Witch Hazel. So this is probably going to be the Kag versus the Narmaya once again. I know both of these players definitely have some counter picks available if they really feel the need to, but I think both of them feel pretty comfortable into each other's mains, so should be heading on into it. Exactly. Yeah, just having those... Uh Having these matchups come up, you know, we're no stranger to this. Witch Hazel's definitely no, no stranger to facing off against the likes of CAG. And we'll see if that's actually CAG that's going to be able to come out. Because like I said, Prada has a whole slew of characters. It is indeed exactly. going to be CAG Leostro. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're rocking the Cheeto Narmaya once again. Goes hard. I guess we could call it the Fanta. A little orange juice action. I'm so excited for all these costumes to come out because this, yeah. like, this is one of the first Arxis games where we're actually getting like more costumes than just color swaps. You yeah. know, more more than just color palettes. Like we're actually getting like the new Catalina costume just came out. That exactly, one looks sick. Yeah. I like that they're swapping up how you obtain them too. One of them, yeah. you know, Battle Pass, and then of course one that you can just buy for yourself yeah. as well. But it's gonna be a button check. We're just gonna make sure everything's all good. Yep. And uh, another thing I've thought about is uh, dude, just speaking of costumes. Yeah. I, I think I've said this before on a broadcast, but I got to plug it every single time I, I can in case Arxis is listening, dude. Uh -huh. I need to see a grand costume from Relink. I need to see Ooh, that the white yeah. armor, dude, and then the pink one for, uh, uh, Gita. for Gita, Yeah. I need that costume, dude. They that, go that's kinda such clean, a sick, right? It's yeah. such a sick look, dude. I, I, I'm a big fan of like the Paladin-esque looking yeah. armor, which yeah, is why I love yeah. Vayne so much. And he like grand rocks it in Relink. Dude, dropping the uh, dropping Relink shortly after uh, Rising is kind of like, it's a blessing and a curse, right? You're like, wow, I get more awesome I Grand Blue action, time. but now, you know, I can't balance between both games, and I want so many outfits to head into the fighting game, but now we're heading into the other side of Loser's Quarters once again, Prada versus Witch Hazel. Let's get it. Losers, this is going to be the last decider of Loser's Quarters to figure out who our top four is going to be. Five competitors left. Let's jump right into it. Again, Witch Hazel's climb before, right? We've seen Witch Hazel get second, so there'd be no stranger to see Witch Hazel make it all the way at this bracket, but... Prada has the same thing. All these players, we're now just in good, good player territory, you exactly, know? Exactly, yeah. Masters of the character on both sides. Catches the spot dodge, the late spot dodge, because they're so far away from the rock, you actually have the opportunity to counter with the spike. So now Hazel back up against the wall. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna block that. I like that bait out. You know, just run over the trap, jump away from it. Because the, the trap doesn't activate immediately. If you exactly. just run up to it and jump away or backstep, it, you can like A bait little it delay, out. right? Or you can hit it. Comes out. Oh no, speaking of. No delay here. Hit full pick up into the side swap. Back up against the wall. The meat grinder puts Hazel in low range. Runs right in there. Goes for the low slide real quick. Try to turn into a strike throw game. We're just going to do it one more time. What an opening coming up from Witch. Yeah, big starter here. Ending the triple attack. And I mean, I think using the raging strike is fine there, right? You already had such low health. Any hit can kill. So you might as well get some extra damage where you can. The one touch on both sides. 6 6 clears off both the traps. No! Oh my god, we found the opening. Can't get the confirm right afterwards, though. You gotta close that distance. You cannot let Cagliostro cook when you only have one health. Oh. Gotta avoid all the projectiles. We got the dodge on deck here, but we can't avoid everything. You saw Witch Hazel survive so many of those special onslaughts. Like, they did a very good job there at the end, exactly. but just not enough. Prada was able to take that first round. Four attempts to chip out, but the fifth was the one that did it first round over to Prada here. And once again, Hazel stuck up against the corner, gets caught out with the last hit on the slashes. All right. That, cl that far heavy again, dude. It's such a good just stop moving towards me. It's like here it is, like right in front of you. That's the Grand Blue spacing normal of all time. Mm. RL just trying to get a little poke out, but now we're going for the teleport. No check from Hazel. Maybe just a little bit too late on the 2H there. Yeah, Kagula is one of those characters that like when they jump into the air, yeah. like they can delay, they can get towards you as fast as possible. So exactly. it's like, it's faster than just a simple jump at you, you know? Yeah. Ooh. Speaking of, no simple jump in here. We go for the air throw, caught out on the other side. First game over to Prada. Prada looking insanely clean in that first round, not dropping a single round as we go into this race to 2-1-0. Yeah. One of our final first to two sets, you know, coming up here. And both of these players, you know, even uh, even Prada on the other side winning that first game going, oh, man, maybe I got to reset, you know, the mental real quick. I'm fighting for my life out here. 
They will chase it one more time, going for these far heavies, trying to find that opportunity. Ooh. Dash light, gonna be able to open up Prada, put you back into the corner. And again, this character is all about like swap between those stances to try to get the correct routes or get the right skills out of you. Another grab coming out, put some more pressure. A second, we can see a third grab. Where's the mix up coming? No, we're just reversing right out of it. But on the run up, Hazel not afraid to match the far L on Wake Up, and now a clean first round. Oh my god, and Slicker's saying, right? Doing such a good job of switching between these stances, rotating those cooldowns. The big tools that we're seeing between both of them, the sword stance, right? The flip, whether it's, you know, EX flip to get these uh, plus frames, or as well the U flip to try and stall out the air, but still, Prada finds the anti air here for a stall. Oh, the triple trap! Saw him do it once, you're gonna see her do it again. Yep. Going right back into you, the triple triad coming out here. Okay! Opens you up with the cross up. Again, that Ooh. move looks like it should be an overhead, but right. it's not. Uh, tries to find something off of the run up for H. Caught out with the spike now. One more time, the spear's coming in, Ooh. drops the golden throne on you. He's trying to go for a brave counter. Waiting strike coming out instead, and Prada dominating once more. Round point, set, set point. Yep. All right. He's a one round away from tying it up, but like you said, Prada one round away from sealing it out. The L slash on block. Right, get punished. Dodges. Oh my god, straight through the trap activation. Run up, full screen, grab, Grand Blue, two in a row, here comes a close heavy. Okay, it was a close light, but the same thing. All good, all good. <laughs> oh, speaking of, the 2L to swipe off one of the traps off the screen, 6-6-M. But we already see Prada trying to make our way back out to the mid-screen. Ooh! This is the big starter, you got 2 BP available, another 50 meter, but opting to just bring us over to the corner. Spot dodge caught off by Golden Throne. Which Hazel's been very tricky with those approaches because yeah. like you see that pro, uh, product like registering what's happening, yeah. and they're too late with trying to get the anti-air punished. By the time they push the button, Ooh. they get counter hit, and Witch Hazel cleaning up that game and evening up the set one to one. All right, Hazel stands. You can hear them in the background as well, right? We got New Head and of course the Oompies as well, cheering on their respective players, and I mean, if you're on either side, right? This yeah. making it over to game three is exactly what you want. You want to see more games from your favorite players. Final game here in Losers Quarters. Going right back in. Oh, far heavy going to open you up. Give me some of that juicy, juicy damage. Yep. Oh, oh my no. god, caught onto the approach again. We see this so many times from Hazel, where every time Prada is trying to run out of the corner, maybe go for a 6-6-L. Hazel is immediately just sticking up the far L, and once again, you should be able to kill here. Confirm it to the super, and now the swap up of momentum. It's set point for Hazel. No animation required. Witch Hazel playing out of their mind. That first game might as well have just been an information game, bro, right. because Witch Hazel playing completely different again. Oh my god. Stopping out the approach from Prada. Recognize that Prada wants to play very aggressive with Kag. Yeah. Yeah. Brave counter because at that point the trap was behind you. You didn't want to deal with that seal being in place. Exactly. So you just immediately delete it as well. Sealing your turn in the process and now you got corner. Oh, there we go. Pick up into the MVP. Ender tries to go for a save jump, but no, just a little bit too late. Jumping gets caught up with the golden throne. Prada finds the 2H. Another one puts you back in there. The trap teleport coming out. Damage starting to climb. Prada might have the opportunity to end this. Can we close it out with the combo? No, we need one more hit on top of that. The spot Ooh. dodge. Literally the grab break. The grab break yep. pushed her into the seal. Tried to go for the far L every time, just saying, OK, maybe I can get it out before the trap actually detonates. But now we're final game, final round. Witch Hazel, we saw so much aggression from before. Now playing just outside of your range and finds the counter hit far age. OK, point blank again. That damage starting to climb. We see a reset coming up from Witch Hazel, potentially. No, break out that grab. Another brave counter on top of that. We try to go for a brave counter ourselves. But drops the combo. Oh, but thankfully we actually tech and take out the trap as well. We escape with the U flip. No damage taken, but still only one BP to Prada's name. Waiting for that hundred to come back up. Two grab throws. Dude, we are just trying to get out of dodge. He gets that very, very far hit. Puts you right back into the corner. Prada throwing out the rocks, the Ooh. spears, the kitchen sink. Anything to find that opening. What's up? Now? He what saw. Up? She saw the walk and gets the punish. And Witch Hazel shutting down any sort of momentum that Prada was trying to do at the very end and solidifies her spot in top four. Losers semis for Hazel, but so down to the wire, so back and forth, just swapping up the play styles, the aggression from both of these players, right? We started it off with Prada being so aggressive. Hazel playing a little bit more passive and oftentimes, you know, getting opened up by the rotating plus frames. Then game two, we saw Hazel explode out of the gate so many times, just going immediate, dash into the slashes, pull up with the Setsuna, and so many times keeping Prada down. And then game three, 
That's where we saw, you know, kind of being, it's so over, we're so back, just trading between so many of those play styles and finally able to seal it out with something we saw throughout that set, right? Yeah. Hazel catching out the run up for Prada every single time, feeling a little bit too confident with the dash up and that far L, just so much range on Armaya to the point where, you know, it's scary. Even with the trap right below her, that late detonation is able to put her into loser semis. But amazing work to Prada here. Yeah, congratulations to Prada getting yeah. fifth place finish here at this very, very stacked bracket here yeah. at New York City. Crossover arc of all things, but hey, someone's gotta take that L and unfortunately it's you today. Which is going to move on to the top four. And guys, yeah. speaking of crossover arc, you guys can donate some money towards this pool, right? All you got to do is check out the Matcherino. Yeah. Right over there, Exclusion Point Matcherino. We still got eight codes left. I know there's eight of you guys that have not claimed those codes. Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me, chat. I know you guys aren't claiming those codes. Come on, get in there. Get that 25 cents. And get, increase that pop by two bucks. Yep. It's already a $3,000 prize pool, by the way, courtesy of Tarek, yeah. the GOAT. The legend adding in his own wallet to this tournament because he wants our players to play strong. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to everybody who has claimed those codes in the Maturinos, all the donations, and of course the production and TO team for making it so that me and Austin can have a great time with you guys to watch the rest of this Grand Blue Top 8. Yeah. Very excited to see what we're going to see here in the top four now. We're going to yeah. jump here, right back, change some gears, jumping over into winner's finals. We are now in first to three territory. Yep. Best of three of five. Wavy facing off against Artorius. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to be heading straight on into it, right? Both of these players just want to get straight into the... Wait a minute. I see the Gita. Maybe it's a button check. It just might to be make sure. Check. I don't think Artorius... You know, especially going up against Wavy, right? Someone who is top caliber Grand Blue player. I think you want to rock with your main on this one. Yeah, oh, we, no, it's the other way around. Wavy is the one on the Gita, but yes, it is still a button check. Like, I said, like we said before, Wavy does have a lot of characters in her kits, right? Yeah. It can bust out a lot, has the Gita, obviously, but yeah. other characters that, you know, Wavy's been playing out here um, has the Gita. I believe she's gone Vera at one point Yeah, I've seen well. a decent amount of Vera as well, yeah. yeah. I think played a little bit of 2B on the drop, but you know, it's it's funny seeing how quickly opinions change, right? You know, maybe one of the first places to be like, mm, I don't know if I'm really feeling the strength of this 2B character. A few days pass, and she and a few other players are like, mm, actually, all right, this, this 2B <laughs> fell is a little strong. I'm still not going to rock her over my main, right? You know, really just showing up with the calculator straight every single time. But now, you know, when she sees the 2B in bracket, she's like, all right. I can't, I can't let my guard down. I got to lock in, and you got to lock in for winner's finals here once again. Wavy and Artorias just making sure everything is all good before we head on into it. Yeah, so Artorias, again, this is a player that's kind of late to the rising scene. Yeah. Uh, got Started entering tournaments about a month and a half ago or so and was already dominating the scene. I think his first yeah. tournament, he got top eight out of TNS or something. Exactly. Then ended yeah, up getting this, onto the scene for sure. Got a second place of like the week after, so definitely putting in a lot of work here. It's no stranger to the fighting games. has been dominating in Guilty Gear Strive with the Johnny. Yeah. Been playing other fighting games on top of that. But now it's Grand Blue time, and he's looking to try to secure that dub go winners finals of course trying to move on to the grand finals and secure that winner's side ticket that extra safety of the set fighting for first place here but you still got to make it past winners once again we got wavy versus artorias cagliostro versus the siegfried winners finals yeah. bro this is the we're, we're, this is the nitty gritty so many players have been playing here through pools all weekend to get to this position and now here we are game number one and right out the gate you're gonna wavy playing very aggressive a lot of these yeah. cat that was insane cool. All right, set the trap immediately. MGP Artorias is like, I want none of these silly, funny mind games. Let me escape. Yeah, didn't even want to commit to that second BP usage to get that brave counter. Knew exactly what Wavy's game plan was going to be there at the start. Wavy's done that before for like a game around start. Really. Exactly. Yeah. Once again, set the trap. Caught in the pressure. Off of six XM on block. We're backing up to on top of that. A lot of these far heavies. Ooh. That was such a good defensive option coming out for Artorias. Recognizing the rock was coming his way, the opportunity, uh, most opportune thing he could have done is just go for the spot dodge. Go. Yeah, we didn't get a full confirm off of the close H there. I wonder what happened with Artorias. That's a rough drop. Now we're walking on through. Caught out with the low. Artorias takes round one. Hit him with the uh-uh into a raging strike off of the sweep. It puts the sword right on top of her. Jeez. Yep, spend all the resources. You gotta make sure you're clean against Wavy right now. Pulls up with the 6 6 out immediately. Getting a lot of mileage of that dash light. Oh, got a little bit overzealous. I think Artorius was banking on hitting Wavy in that little bit of a the frame trap there. But Wavy just played defensively. I bet you want to come to my trap? Have fun. A little anti here. I like the triple close out juggle. You know, we see that from Artorius and from Siegfried, right? As that unblockable setup. But we also got that on the Cagliostro. So once again, wall bounce up against the corner. About to be 100 meter for Wavy. Raging strike into the super. No, not quite yet. 
Oh my Ooh. god. Catches the crouching light, converts it into the smallest of combos, and still is able to close that out, turning this into a 1 1 round. Oh, there we go. We tried to go for the EX spike, but actually, Artorias has been saying so aggressive every single round start. Still does get caught up by Wavy here. Yeah, Wavy, a big fan of just putting out those seals as fast as possible so that we can get some combo damage on there. It plays neutral for her as well, so if you're like back there, you gotta be on the careful. And Wavy's all about trying to drag the opponent towards it. No, come closer, come closer. Exactly. I want you to be on this trap. Every single time. Oh my god, Yo! the first dodge on the Raging Strike we've seen. All this top eight running on through. Didn't get a ton of damage off of it. The mate's out. The DP as well. I cannot believe that punish. Archari is optimizing it. Oh! Does it again? Are you kidding me, Archari? Is you're going to go in there and just Raging Strike again and again? Closing out the first game in kind of like a weird fashion, to be honest. That was what? Ain't no way, bro. Yeah, we see the, the chatting real quick before we head into the next one. Bro, Man, the, the double raging strike. Was that triple? I actually lost count. So uh, the, uh, he called out Wavy with a raging strike. Right. Once is a punish on the um, the DP, oh, the so DP, yeah. you couldn't do anything. But the second time was a check, like you're not oh, paying attention. Okay. And the third one was Awake just the wheel. The third did. one was a raging chain in the middle of the I combo. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but we spent all three of them back to back. All right. All right. All right. We're just checking the audio real quick before we head into game number two. I'm just gonna raging strike again. Honestly, you know, sometimes you gotta. Uh, you gotta play a little crazy. That was, I cannot believe Arturias' bravery there. I, you know, I don't really see Raging Strike as a punish very right. often, but it's, that's a pretty good punish to go for, right? Like, you're gonna get a lot of damage off of a Raging Strike. So, you know? Yeah. A lot of people would probably opt to go for like a far heavy from that distance, right? Yeah. But because he was so far away, had to back up, recognizing that like, you know, we have a reversal like Cagliostro's. Yeah. It's a kind of a big hitbox. You have to be pretty far away, so you don't want to. Pretty wide golden throw, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So why not go for the raging strike that almost goes mid screen? Exactly. Drain some of the BP as well, so that even if you're not able to kill off of that next interaction, then you take out the opportunity for Wavy to try and go for the brave counter, escape, and bring the round back. You know, which you've seen time and time again in some of these sets, right? All of these comeback situations. Yeah. I think we're figuring out the audio issues here, just yeah. making sure that we can be able to hear the game volume correctly. Sounds important in this game, man. Yeah, exactly. Especially, you know, going up against something like a Raging Strike, right? You know, it's a pretty big effect over on the screen as well, but the biggest thing is the audio cue, right? The bass mm. drop coming out, you know, for that reaction. So definitely want to, you know, especially against a player who is willing to let it rock time after time. You want to have all the advantages you can. And one of my favorite things about this venue in particular, when they yeah. have like the the volume blasting, right, is that you can hear those hits because the, you can. the they, bass is ripped on that speaker. Yeah. You know what I'm wow. saying? So, I mean, obviously the it, the players aren't going to use that; they're going to use their headphones. Exactly. Their headphones, yeah. But like the audience, but don't worry, can the hear crowd that. can hear it too. I can hear it, bro. I'm wearing headphones. I can hear it. It's loud here. enough that the crowd could be like, "Wavy, wavy, look, there's a raging yeah. set. You got a dodge." <laughs> Wait, you know. Right there. Yo, was that just a jump scare from SKD? Did he yeah. just appear on screen there? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the SKD jump scare? Yeah, yeah. So he actually works at this venue. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, today mm -hmm. I learned. One, 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 of my, one of my coworkers. So like, right, I, I work right. here as well. So the, sick venue. I always, I always like to give, On the home turf? Pull yeah, it up. home yeah. turf, bro. I always like to let people know about this venue. This venue is very sick. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to plug it for a bit. You know, if you guys want to get a day pass, it's only $25 here, you know? You could be exactly. here all day, noon to midnight. You lots can play of systems, lots of consoles, of games, so many PC, games. PCs, PS5s, uh, Switches, Xboxes. We have a F F1 simulators. Yeah. So anything you want. But hey, listen, we got it ripped up. Let's go. Jump into game number two. <laughs> Let's see it. Again, one game on Artorias' side, but this is first to three. Over here in the winners' finals, triple six six L for Wavy to try and get this pressure on. Bam! Amelia starting you off. Artorias comes right back in. Another slash coming out. Grab on top of it. Artorias is very good at just getting like those aggressive openings. You know, yeah. plays very aggressive from the round start, right? You know, just to make sure that any uh, attempts to try and go for the spike or immediately set the trap to get caught up or at least challenge. Oh my God! Tried the challenge after the ultimate spike, but just a little bit too far off for it to reach. Oh my god, not the tick throw coming in. We're gonna do it one more time. The thing is, the trap makes it even difficult, but Atreus did. There is something about Atreus <laughs> playing this game and just optimizing stuff, right? Like, recognizing the entire situation that trap, that seal was gonna be able to apply some block chain and go for a, a sweep from that far away to convert it. But now things are looking very scary. We have three BP left to play, Ooh. but not enough to be able to get in there and do something meaningful. Wavy can hit from full screen. 
Yeah, so many times the mind games, right? When you have that rock stocked up as Kagliostro, you throw it out, especially when they're scared with the chip damage. Yeah. A lot of times they'll go for the spot dodge. And if there's a trap below you, or if we're able to recover in time for the spike, speaking of knocking on the door with the close L, brings us over to the corner once again. Bro, Charge is breaking those throws every single time, bro. I heard that. Yep. had like three times. Dude! Rock charged up. Waited out. Oh, tries to frame trap you and catch out something, but walk down to the corner once again. Does not get the confirm to the Beyblade. No! Runs up there, gets the close heavy, big punish. Gonna go. Oh, gets Ooh. another close light from that far away. Converts it into a Super Skybinder. Unfortunately, it was too far away to trigger the animation. Cuts in. Oh! You do it to me, I do it right back. Wavy, not gonna be able to get too much meaningful out of that. We didn't have enough meter management to try to get a bigger combo, but the Brave Counter's gonna put you to chip killing. Any special can kill at this point, so we're spamming spot dodge. Ops to go for the 6-6-M six, six to do the rabbit hop, and is gonna be able to even up this set count one to one in this race to three. Yeah, such a smart way to try and go, uh, you know, catch out that spot dodge, right? You're forced to try and avoid the chip damage there from the spike, from the traps as well. So any way that she's able to frame chop the recovery of your spot dodge is that checkmate situation, unless you avoid it entirely. But, you know, taking to the skies or going for no. these back dashes, also similarly committal, and it's scary. All right, game number three. Let's dive in one to one here, only block on those seals. Once more coming in, gets the double slash, puts you into the corner. No stranger to this opener, right? I feel like we just watched the opening of the last game. <laughs> Yo, never mind. This is the redux. This is the remix. So what we see a lot, right, is Cagliostro having multiple ways to try and go for that air stall. Once you delay it a little bit more, we air stall it twice. But because you've air stalled so many times, we're able to whip the 2H and then go for it again. Lots of health loss for Wavy here and trying to bring the momentum back into her favor. Right, Travis. I like Arturius trying to go for the 6-6-M uh, six, six to delete that trap and also try to catch Wavy's feet. But Wavy yeah. was already airborne, going to be able to avoid all that, but not going to be able to avoid all this damage coming out from Arturius. Trying to open you up, calls out the jump, that projectile can catch, jumps. What a what a combo route, dog! With the full pickup, the airborne 6-6-L six, six, hit off of the tipper, the very top of the flame wall, catching Wavy out in an attempt to try and air stall over. He caught her with that tippy toes. That's what I'm saying. Firewall keeping out the virus right now. 2L to stop the approach. No full confirm off of it though. Artorias whipping at the skies. Still finds a hit on Wavy. Really good at these frame traps and just trying to bait Wavy into pushing a button. We're going to be able to power up in the middle of that combo. Increase her damage at the cost of a little bit of health. Yep. Ooh. MVP Reverse. on the 6XL. Yep. No reset on the pressure here. Did anyone want to deal with that nonsense? Yeah. I'm good. Send out the UDP. Knock the door. Far H. Standing right on top of the trap. Oh, it actually brought you over with the spike too. I'll try to say no solicitors with ah. that brave counter. Baits out a brave counter from Wavy. He's gonna eat up a lot of more health going down further and further. Gonna spin on the bravery point to be able to get the refund off of the skybound art. It doesn't even matter if you get the refund because it did everything. It got the kill. I'm just gonna take the lead in this set. Best three of five. It is now two to one. So that super stole the BP you needed. 120% damage boost. And definitely, you know, Siegfried is not a character that lacks on the super damage regardless, right? And that was so smart. We got the spot dodge, trying to bait out the Brave Counter. Wavy went for delay Brave Counter, but still was able to catch up the Raging Strike afterwards, too. So Artorius, now one game away from moving on to Grand Finals winner side. But if I know Wavy, I would not be shocked if this goes to a Game 5 situation, because Wavy is not uh, showing any signs of being uh, shown any sort of momentum down, right? We saw, we're on, run right in there, bait out a grab, get the close heavy to open up that combo start, catch as you walk him backwards. 100 meter for Artorias, so barely any health left in the bank. Wavy trying to seal it out with that final BP. Ooh. Oh my god, one more time. Chunky close H here. Wavy you're really trying to fight and bring this back. Another round coming up here, Wavy up. It's gonna be both players opting to go for the far heavies respectfully from both sides. But again, Arturis finding up that Ooh. first round starts. New, you're gonna teleport right behind you. Ops to react to it, calling it out with a close light. You were trying to set up that sealed knock. Get out of my face. Close light didn't do enough. Now we got the 6-6L six, six dashing on through. Get you off of that DP, MDP once again to try and bring that momentum back. Ooh, rolls out the jump, the far head, the crouching heavy of only foretold by legends. Gets the hit. Is this your death? You're actually dead. Maybe not feeling too good about that. It's set point for Artorias. Blast the airpods right now. Potentially the final round of winners finals. 
I would not be dude, Arturius could win this tournament. Yeah. Like, he's been playing so good in the past couple of weeks. Like I would not be absolutely perturbed at all from that victory coming up. But Wavy, one of a reigning champion, multiple TNSs, multiple yeah. lasties underneath her belt. She is no slouch to being in grand finals either, and she wants it really bad. Absolutely not. Knocking the door with the close outs once again. Brave counter comes out from Artorius. 100 meter on the brain. 6XL catches you out. All right. Letting that damage fly even further. Trying to beat out a grabber. A button. Wavy is not pushing a button until the last final moment. We convert it into the bravery counter. And Artreus takes the set, solidifying himself in grand finals. Guaranteed top two. And it is looking very strong to be your winner here at Crossover Arc. 2024. My so word. clean with it on the Siegfried play. So solid, you know, definitely showing aggression where he needed it, right? You know, pulling up with the six XLs, making sure that Wavy couldn't get away with trap sets in neutral and, you know, just charging up the rock as well. Keeping up so much of this pressure where we felt like we had to spend some of that meter for the UDP to try and escape. That leaves, you know, not a lot for the ultimate seals like we've seen in previous sets coming out from Wavy, right? So hard to hold on to the neutral when you're using so much just to escape on defense. Yeah, and dude, Arturius, one thing I, I if I can describe Arturius yeah. in one word, like his play style in one word, optimal. Yeah. I feel like he's always going for like the most optimal combo routes. He's always going for very good optimal punishes. Neutral yeah. looking very clean. Like he's just really, it, it feels. He's clean with it. Dude. I gotta say. I'm a huge fan of this sick fruit. Yeah. And you know, uh, that's disregarding, you know, the couple times here and there where we have a crucial drop on a UDP punish, you know, or a Raging Strike drop. But other than that, right, you know, I feel like sometimes it's funny enough, like, those combo drops inspire him to be optimal for the next, like, five, six, seven interactions. Where it's like, all right, this Siegfried champion kind of cranks out damage, but also Artorius piloting him expertly, making sure to get the most out of every single hit. Yeah, but hey. If you're not sick of Siegfried yet, we still got him going out on the loser's side. But before that, guys, go ahead and check out the store over here for Crossover Arc. We got some sick merch over there. This is just a, a couple of examples they got over yeah. there. These mugs are freaking sick, dog. I want the Siegfried one so badly. If, if Arturius wins this, bro, he deserves one of those In mugs. honor of him, yeah. Just send that one over. Of course, we got the Kaguya design, Siegfried, Anila, and Kuan. And guys, if you're not a coffee drinker, you don't drink much tea over there in the household. It's all good. No drip coffee, but you can get a little bit more drip with these as shirt designs as well. There's also more stuff in that store that we don't even have on the screen. What could it be? You'll only find out by stopping by Impurist.club today. Bro, I'll drink water out of that bottle. That's what man. I'm saying, like, I, I don't, It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I don't need no caffeine. Just give me some water in that and I'm good to go, bro. So those mugs looking very clean. They got some really sick shirts over there, they too. Do. I was kind of hoping they'd have shirts here, but hey, we got some coats at least. We got the staff yeah, coats, bro. Yeah. That was sick. I actually wore that today. I was like, well, wow. Let me, let me show you guys yeah, real quick. Bust it out. I, I have it back there somewhere, so it's not next to me, but these coats are sick. I'm shocked this is what they gave so to we us. Got, we got the front over here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we got the back. It's clean. Look at that. It's so clean. clean. Dude, it's over our the, 2024 staff. The best part, it's mad warm. It is, yeah. I was wearing that outside. It's 34 degrees outside. I wear that joint. It, it feels warm, yeah. like it's 60. Like I'm like, wow, I was actually shocked. So it thanks well so much to Crossover for hooking us up with the drip ourselves. So oh, yeah. able to represent the staff. But guys, it's time to jump over into Losers Semis. Coach Steve. Coming up with the Siegfried. Gonna be time facing off against Oofy's own Witch Hazel with the Narmaya. There we go. Once again, Siegfried Narmaya heading up to the stands here. I would assume a button check once again. In the loser's side, our final first to two match of the day. Fighting for their tournament lives, trying to make it over to that top three. Yeah, very important spot to be in, right? Because I'm pretty sure it pays out top three. Maybe it pays out top four, but yeah. like, Top three is like where the bigger money yeah, comes Yeah, you're really from, trying you know? to get that extra split there, you know? And there's so much money. I was actually looking at the Macharinos for all the games, right? Yeah. And you're going to notice that like Melty Blood has the most amount of money. But you got to remember, those are the games that got $1,000. Exactly. Guilty Grand Blue and Uni 2 are the two games that got like $3,000 each. Yeah. So like we really like you guys putting in money to the Macharino, but it's like we, there's a lot of money they're already playing The starting for, prize pool like, is definitely insane throughout all of these main games. So again, Big shout out to everyone who supported, whether it's a Majorino donation or claiming those coupon codes or directly contributing to that initial prize pool. There is a lot of support for all these gamers here over at Crossover Arc 2024. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the Grand Blue Top 8 and we got our final few sets coming up. About to dive into it, getting on the character select screen. Fist bump's about to come out. Maybe they already did it. And we're gonna jump in to this back to race to two, by the way. This is yep. best two of three territory. We're back yes. in loser semis. Our final first to two as we head right on into it once again. Oomphy's own Witch Hazel versus Coach Steve. 
coming right back in. If there's one thing that Steve's going to do, it's going to be 6-6-7. Six, six, He's yeah. going to open up your feet immediately with that low. There we go. Let the DP rock. Make our way back on the corner. Plus frames with the Satsuna. Okay, just reversal. Get out of my face. It's my turn. Boom. But you got to remember, she's got it too, right? She's got the parry reversal. Oh, my God. She's got the parry reversal, and she's got a little bit of invul on the U flip right, going right on through the fireball. No, but the raging strike a little bit too far. Coach Steve able to get a full punish for it. Trying to get that confirmed from downtown. Unfortunately, we missed that basket shot, and Steve's going to capitalize on that mistake. You were in chip killing damage, so we're going to let that DP rock. Yeah, we got the spot dodge, you know, on the bonk, but still dying to the chip damage here. First round over to Coach Steve. Okay, good start out here from Witch Hazel. Just get a little bit of momentum, get that stage control as well. Stomps down with the uh, heavy, uh, medium version, does it again. Steve loves the medium pipe. Watch your toes, dog. You can't move from that. So many lows. We we love the 6XM on Coach Steve and also the triple attack low follow up as well. Tries to jump over to bid out of Brave Counter, but on the way back down, finds the far L Nash. What else do we love from Steve? It's going to be reversal. Oh, yeah. The uh, MVP he, rocket. He can't keep getting away from with this, right? Which <laughs> he can't keep finally, getting away with this, man. Which he's going to block him for the first time. Coach is just going to be like light, like immediately. <laughs> exactly. Unhand me right now. All right, swap the stance. Back up into the corner here. Coach Steve escapes. Does spend one BP. Going to get the refund off of the special. But honestly, might not even need it because this is going to kill. You're taking 50% additional damage. Yeah. You're done for. With no BP in the tank, we already knew that super was going to kill. So it's first game over to Coach Steve. Just needs one more to move on to the loser's finals. And you don't have the games to play with to try to like you know learn that you do yeah. it like in finals. So this could be potentially the last game for Witch Hazel. Yeah, playing the slow knowledge game, really not something you're going to have available in the first of two. Able to grab the uh, throw attack there, but it is Coach Steve finding a 6 6 M, and more importantly, the 2-H to bring you all the way over to the other side. You can sense the struggle coming out from Witch Hazel because we saw the jump in a desperate attempt to just try to, like, skip neutral a yeah. little bit. Goes for the crossover and Ooh. still is able to get another swing coming out from Steve, looking unstoppable right now. Yeah, old way to try and escape the corner there. Tried to get the knockdown off the M slashes, but they are punishable on the way down. Oh my god, go straight into the super try and even out this BP lead. Yeah, Steve with zero BP is gonna be huge for Witch Hazel, right? Having BP advantage is very important. You're still one hit from being able to die, so you gotta play very clean at this point. And that's exactly how you start it up. You go for a shimmy, get the hit, and turn it into a kill. Steve falling for the baits. Go a little shimmy, a little frame trap action, trying to tie it up. Hazel, oh, sends a sense enough, but that firewall gonna go straight on through. Dude, okay. Going back in, goes with the overhead. Steve's getting a lot of mileage out of these auto attacks. Yeah, right. It's right, the overheads, the lows. So then you just kind of forget about that stuff. You don't get anything meaningful on the way, you know? Exactly. It's just kind of like a frustration point. It's a little bit of damage, a few plus frames as well, and technically it is fuzzyable between the high and the low, but when you're looking for the specials, you're looking for 6-6-M six, six as well. There's so much on the brain. Lastly, you're thinking of is fuzzying that high low. Oh my god, stuck up against the corner. Once again, Coach Steve catches on so much. Dude, you can't move against Steve. He's gonna find a way to catch those shins every single time. Finding so many of those, and we're alive? We're alive? I thought Witch Hazel was dead. Hold For on a much second. Longer, though. Oh my god, the JL falls all the way down, active until landing. And now it's set point for Steve. One more significant round win here for Steve to try to get in the top three. Witch Hazel trying to stay alive with this tournament point, looking very strong. Goes for the reversal, calls out that super jump from Steve, and just opens him up immediately. Uh oh. Get out the MVP. The close H starter. There we go. Gotta get as much damage as we can. Coach Steve gonna be locked up against the corner here. Hazel waiting for the 50. Okay, we'll, we'll call it a frame kill. Yeah, try and go for, uh, honestly, it's like a timing thing to go for that DP and just like kind of mix up your media exactly, right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Puts you right back in there, receive with another reversal, showing no fear, even though it got blocked Ooh, the no. one time. We tried to go through the projectile a little bit too late with that. We're holding down the medium version yeah. of the slash. Full screen, apply the pressure. Good punish coming out from Steve. Drag you right back over to the corner. Now we got meter to play with 50 on the board. Can we open up Hazel? One touch, defending for the game. Whoa! Finds the U-flip starter. Hazel with the air stall, ties it up. One, one. Just when you thought Witch Hazel was about out of the tournament, nope. they bring her right back into it. One to one on the verge of getting in the top three. Either of these players could do it in this final game of loser semis. They brought me back in for one more ride. Our final game of loser semis. Coach Steve, once again, off to a strong start. Got one more in me, brother. Coming right <laughs> back in. Throws out the projectile. Woo! 
you were trying to approach on that? No, 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 no. I'm stealing that turn. Unhand me. Let me get out of the corner real quick. Oh, Ooh. no, a little bit too early in the grab. You were two plus for your own good, but now MDP into the EX Fire while Coach Steve fights back. Another jump, gonna brave counter that just to seal the turn right back. 100 meter on the board for both players. So both like might be able to start using those rolls with skills, but we catch you with the sneaky dash light coming in. Does the bravery again one more time to extend that combo with yep. the refund right after what's gonna regain that shiny little timer. There we go, 2 b no. your name. No, didn't even dodge it. It was on hit, a full confirm. Now, swapped up on the momentum. It's Hazel on set point looking and loses finals. There was so much mental stack on Coach Steve there because he did like that was like the last thing you're expecting was a raging yeah. strike for the Oki. So he's like, oh, I can't block this. I have to do something else. And so he got hit by it. Bates out the DP. Okay, there we go. EX Orkin for the corner here. Coach Steve really wants to tie this up. Bates on the DP once again. Run up and block. Man, this round is looking all but over right now. Get the refund off the EX2. Which Hazel has a lot of meter. Goes for a grab, a second one on top of that just to try to close the distance. But Coach Steve looking for the answer. Costs you, uh, catches you, pushing a button. Oh, can't get the confirm, but that's okay. We're letting the DP rip. Final round of loser semis. There we go, fighting for their lives here. Final round, Hazel playing a little bit more risky at that one HP now, but we're fighting for our lives a little bit more slow. Coach Steve sends out the 6-6-M. Both these players have been throwing out DPs like crazy, by the way. So at this point, we might start playing a little bit more passive because of that condition, just to give me that safe, safe pressure right afterwards. Ooh. Yeah, the EX Slash is on block. They are punishable, and Coach Steve knows to look out for it. Brave counter to try and steal it back, but BP for BP. Doing it one more time. Do we keep exchanging them? Don't do it nah. again. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, we did it right there. One diamond apiece. No, the calling you out with the dive. Okay. Yeah. okay. Toss you into the corner. Late throw attack. A little bit of chip. Oh. That's huge. Yeah, Calls out her hip. He called out, she called out the brave counter. Comes right back in. Can we call it out? We slid that skybound arc rip. Unsheathes the sword. And Witch Hazel solidifying their spot here in losers finals. Top three. Well, you were out partying. She was studying the blade. Witch Hazel moves on to losers finals. Stick on the stand. You're fighting for your life until you're out of there. And Coach Steve put up one hell of a fight. Shout outs yes. to him for getting fourth place at this tournament, man. That is no easy task. You know he wanted more, but yep. hey, still putting top four on your resume for future, in future tournaments at a stack tournament like this, exactly. nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, and Coach Steve definitely a master in so many of these different games, right? So to be able to compete at the top level across so many different franchises, which, you know, system mechanics wise are so different, character wise, game flow wise are so disparate from each other, <laughs> and still being able to adapt in the moment, you know, keeping up those high placing results, amazing work once again. As we wait for Hazel's next opponent, we got Wavy up on the stand here, looking for that yeah, runback. Honestly, you're in the hot seat at this point, right? Yeah. If you're Narmaya, you're just sitting there. Now you gotta play against the Cagliostro with the Narmaya, see how this is gonna be able to go down. We're almost done, dude. This has been a fast bracket. Only, it's only been an hour and a half, and That's we're already in losers' just finals. Just zooming by. Oh my god. Hopefully, you guys have been enjoying. We got our last two sets over here. It's almost time, dude. Waiting for this next set to come in. They're going to be able to top if we jump into this one with the Narmaya itself. Again, Narmaya, a character we don't really see too often. Yeah. Hazel, you know, definitely one of the main representatives of this character right. in NA, right? Of course, uh, a few other strong Narmayas come to mind as well. You know, Mr. Quotes, you know, also from the Tri-State area, K-Tang has really been tearing it up, I think, in Chicago as well. But, you know, like you're saying, a relatively underrepresented character, I think going into the Cagliostro, right? We have some tricky skills to be able to try and challenge mm -hmm. those zoning patterns. You know, oh, maybe it's an EX Setsuna to try and challenge the Trap Set or a Rock Set. But, you know, of course, Cagliostro, with all the air stalls, has a lot of good ways to avoid that as well. So, it yeah. be scary. And on top of that, you know, like Witch Hazel herself showing that, like, she's up there to try to become one of the best Narmayas, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Got a second place at one of the last D Opens. Is definitely on the verge of trying to get a first place finish here at Crossover Arc 2024. All righty. Are we going to go straight on into it? No, test the buttons, of course. We got to make sure, right? Over Absolutely. here in the top three, no Johns, no excuses. Make sure the buttons are all good. <sighs> oh, man. I'm just like locked in right now, J2. I want to see how this is going to be able to play out, who's going to be able to take home this tournament. Because right now, like Arturius is like the one that's sitting in grand finals and yep. has the edge. He's been playing very clean all day today. And one of these players is going to have to face off against him one more time. Yeah. And that's like a very daunting feat because not only do you have to defeat one of these godlike players, you have to go fight off against someone who's also equally as strong. And yeah. that's just such a tall order. 
And Artorias has really been playing out of his mind today, right? You know, we saw a couple crucial combo drops, but still able to clear the mental every single time. And now with so much on the line here, losers finals. Let's see who can stay in the clutch. First to three between Oomphy's Witch Hazel and New Head's own Wavy. Dive in again, throwing out those seals immediately. This is what Cagliosha is going to do, right? A lot of people will think Cagliosha is a very defensive character, right? Yeah. You want to play as a zoner, back up, set up the seals, set up the traps. But that is not how Wavy is going to be playing Cagliosha. Wavy is all about playing mad aggressive. Yeah, just pulling up every single time. 6 6 else to reset the pressure. Far H to try and frame trap you. And then also the traps to try and steal some turns as well and mm. get that space control down. Ooh. I'm digging that 6-6-M, right? Because not only that catch Cag's feet, you're also going to be able to get rid of that trap right underneath. We're just going to Brave Counter right there because not only do you want to give up the turn, but you can also just uh, get rid of the seal. But now because we did that second Brave Counter on that Raging Strike, we are out of resources. There we go. And Smart the challenge off of the Air Golden Throne, right? Yes, you're jailed into a button, but if you use a DP, there is a spot. No DP speaking of on either side. Every single hit means so much. Triple auto combo into the super, but look how much damage it's going to do regardless. Yeah, literally cashing it out on a triple combo, like I understand just trying to like, get that out, but yeah. it does a lot of damage because of 50% done. Ooh. We got the mix! Okay, we got okay. the mix! Yeah, that was nice for Hazel, right? When you go into the super, you get one of those BP back, so you're really hemorrhaging that damage debuff there. So able to play a little bit more risky. Wavy trying to mash on out, but it's the counter hit close H. Once again, it gets so much help for Hazel. Which Hazel's playing insanely good right now. Follows up the combo even further, puts you right back into the corner. We're gonna have to hold that block shing for a little bit longer. And Wavy's just trying to get some setup here, right? Putting out those traps. We get the teleport, and that's gonna be the option, but we call out that stuff, something out that option with another 6 6 L. Yeah, nothing found off of the close H, just a little bit too far. So Hazel finds the way back out with 6 6 L. It's one on the board. Yeah, oh my god, and the $50 contribution from Mick. Hey, hopefully you're enjoying Grand Blue as much as we are. Thank you so much for the generosity as we head into game number two. Hell yeah. Get right back into there. The seal's back down on the ground again. Very something you have to be sought after, right? Cagliosha, one of those very rare characters that can get a meaningful combo off of a grab. Yeah, exactly. When you have those uh, traps set up either on the ground or on the top above you, you know, it's so scary when that strike though really gets loaded on the reward. Stuck in the corner once again. Like we said, that trap right above you for any confirm. Coming in again, some more dash lights. Brave counter to stop off that oppression. And Wavy looking very strong this game around and getting Ooh. all the knowledge that she needs from the previous one. Yeah, and smart patience coming out there from Wavy, right? We've seen a lot of the U-Flip air stall coming out from Hazel. So now we're playing it a little bit more patient at that low HP. All you need is the DP, so just wait for Hazel to come to you. 6XL seems to be the name of the game here from both players. Wavy spamming it a lot to put you right back into the porn pressure. Whenever that dash light's coming out, you are mad plus afterwards. Ooh. And we got the Raging Strike to just open you up. We've been seeing a lot of interesting uses of Raging Strikes today. Yeah. But that's a heartbreaker, right? Wavy got the hit, but still no confirm off of it. Means Hazel brings you all the way over to the other side. It's going to be a little while until you build up the 100 to try and get that BP back. But cash out on the damage where we can restamp with the use that's enough. Yeah, just doing a point blank unsheed that sword right in her face to get that more damage. Another brave count. Both these players are just mashing their diamonds, oh, yeah. dog. They don't have, they have no, no fear. <laughs> I was actually scared that the U flip was going to involt all the way through the meat grinder, but trust me, that super's got more than enough active frames to catch you out. Spin for a spin, one for one over here in Losers Finals. It has so many active frames, we go into seconds territory. Exactly, it's active for yeah. 60 plus frames, so it's a block. Yeah, you got to start dividing by 60 at that point. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Old flip is, you know, pretty small in the invul. You know, you can use it to try and catch out a couple anti airs, but especially on something that long duration, you're, you're going to get good. Oh no, putting you right back into the mix. Here we go, Witch Hazel opening up Wavy bit by bit, gets another big combo. That was a 25 hit, bro. Yeah, so right. many. I mean, that, looking like Lancelot out here. Decent amount of hits over here. Combo limit really is just a suggestion, but. No, caught out with a spike, a little frame trap action. You've been seeing a lot of Avari 6XLs coming out from Hazel. Calling out the jump, gets the anti-air, gonna turn it into some clean damage because of the traps that were already set up to block. Ooh. Goes for the reversal, but we were blocking already. We yeah. expected that. Blocked on the way down, not trying to be greedy with a button. Here we go. Blocking the DP, puts another run on the board here for Wavy. Another Brave Counter, just gonna be able to block that instead. Poking out a little bit, another ult coming out, or the EX variety, 6-6-L, six, yeah. six, what is... <laughs> hey, if we 6-6-L six, six, three times in a row, 
Close heavy is going to happen, right? Exactly, right? Looking for the frame trap at some point. No, tries to go for the preemptive 2 H. You have a lot of health to try and gamble with it, but again, a lot of damage taken off of it. On the other side, Old Seal catches up the jump. Continues to climb, too. We're looking very low health here on Witch. Hazel gets another. Goes for the auto combo, converts it into the meat grinder. That's going to be a lead now for Wavy. 2-1. All right, but once again, this is first and three, right? Down in the loser's finals. Hazel still has the opportunity to try and tie it up, but it looks like Weavy really running it with the momentum, right? Is comfortable playing on the aggressive side, you know, risking going for these two H's, these anti heroes. Yes, the old flip is going to do a lot if you stall out, but, you know, Weavy doesn't want to let these opportunities to get damage on Hazel go by, even at the cost of her own HP. Going for another dash light out the gate. It applies a lot of pressure. There are seals all over Ooh. you. I respect that decision from yeah. Witch Hazel because you got to get out of there. But Wavy getting another close heavy to extend the damage. Now we're on tournament point. The micro delay from Wavy on the run up there baited out the active frames of the parry and able to get a full close age. It's set point for Wavy. She wants this run back in grand final so bad. Look at these far heavies coming out. Oh, we want the grab on top of that. Wavy yeah. seems to be in her head. I don't know. This is the, we're getting a lot of jumps down the I be Ooh. complete. We throw down the tr trophy on top Ooh. of you, bro. All right. Wake up with the 2L, run right into the DP. That's a lot of meter loss for Wavy now, so can't use it for any ult seal shenanigans, ult uh, golden throne, but still might not even need it. 3 VP to your name, Wavy, off the next hit, should be able to kill, and indeed she does off the jump in. 3-1 to get the run back in grand finals, but again, amazing work to Witch Hazel, out at number three for crossover on 2024. Helping put Armaya on the map one step at a time alongside Katang. Like, she has been putting in so much work in the past couple of months with this character yep. in solidifying herself as the top Narmaya at crossover arc for the third place finish. And the crowd's definitely giving up for her. Yeah, exactly. She's the a crowd getting so much love. She's like, oh, I wish I did better. They're like, you know what, Bestie, you did great. You're in top three. You're getting a large chunk of that $3,000 pot yeah. plus whatever you guys want to donate to the Matcherino. All you got to do is type in the exclamation point Matcherino. You see the prize pool here. All the codes have been claimed. So thank you guys very much for being able to claim that. But if you guys want to help donate a little bit more money to these players who are putting on quite the show, you can go ahead and do it right over there at the Matcherino. There's also merch you can buy. Yeah. And big shout out for you guys who have been donating to any of these prize pools, whether it's Grand Blue or any of the other main games we got over here at Crossover Arc. So much support, so many of you guys tuning in for our final set of the evening Grand Finals. Artorius sitting pretty in the winner's side, and of course, Wavy looking for that run back from losers. I am so excited to see it. So, J2, there were eight players to start off this broadcast, yep. and now we're down to the final two. Grand Finals, Artorius making a trip back over here to Grand Finals. He's been waiting ever so patiently on winner's side of things, but the onus is now on Wavy to win six games in a row. Well, not in a row, but just six games in general exactly. to take home the crossover world. Yeah, and against someone who, you know, like you were saying, Artoria is so on point with all these combo conversions, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to, you know, drop these combos or lose these interactions because he's going to make the most out of it every single time. So we're button checking real quick just to make sure before we head into our final set of the day. Jitsu, if you were a betting man, if you were a betting man, mm -hmm. if you were a gambler per se, who you got? Honestly, I mean, Artorius is playing super solid today, but I've seen Wavy bring it back from the loser side, you know, from these, uh, you know, set losses or these these set disadvantages. And sometimes I can I can see it in her eyes when she she decides to lock in. She's like, no, 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 I can't be losing like this. We see the gamer lean 45 degrees. So honestly, I might have to put it on Wavy for this one. She's got that loser's one momentum right now. Okay, I think Wavy's really good at longer Who sets. Yeah, I think the more not. You hear the crowd shout from Artorius. No, no, and who, who wants New York's Wavy to win crossover art? Lots of fans over here on the side. And I mean, you know, we got yeah. we got East Coast privilege on both of them, right? I want to say Artorius is from the DMV. Might have been from NJ originally as well. So, you know, East Coast love extends to both of these players, but only one of them can be the champion of Grand Blue over here at Crossover Arc 2024. That's absolutely right. You got to remember, the, the crowd cheering was pretty even in my eyes. Right? Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, there was one dude that was loud with the whistle. Who really you know? wanted Wavy yeah. to win. Yeah, yeah. But besides that, it was pretty even. But exactly. here we go. Jumping into Grand Finals here for Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising Crossover Arc 2024. 
Let's lock it in, man. Artorias versus Wavy. Let's see it for game number one. Lock in and clock in. No intros needed. We're going straight on into the action for Grand Finals. Never mind. We are not going straight into the action for Grand Finals just yet. All that builds up and for what? <laughs> and for and what? For what? That was like the longest loading screen we've seen all day, too. I was like, man, come on, man. Was that on an SSD, dog? On a PS5? Just got to make sure. You know, maybe they were like, okay, what are, are my technical commands on? I've seen a couple of players in pools who, all, who actually got tripped up by that as well. Mm. So for those of you who don't know, Eustace generally turns off technical commands because he has the charge motions, but then also, you know, 6XL out of down back can be a little funky. Too. But anyway, should be all good. Back to the Coliseum. This one should be game one of Grand Finals. I'm about to get mixed up, bro. All right. I'm Surely they don't restart twice, for right? No, intro. All right, whatever. Go straight into the action. Yeah. Grand Finals, let's see it. The run back. We just, we just don't let that rock whatsoever. Exactly, it's all yeah. good. All these spears coming out immediately out from Wavy again. That's what you're gonna see a lot for this character, right? Throwing yep. out a lot of these swings from far away to increase the damage. And we got the raging Ooh. strike in the mid combo to call you off guard. Caught you lacking. There you go. Trying to go for a reset there with the close age, but no, does find the reset with a raging strike. No reaction from Artorius. That's a quick kill. Two raging strikes. And the first no one of the things you're gonna do too. Like, I'm daring you to spot dodge, bro. Where's your reaction, son? Yeah. Ooh. Far eight, trying to find the pickup into the old spear, but no, all we need is the Beyblade. Boomer check. No, no, no. Artorius is a youngin, bro. We can't be having that excuse here. No check on the anti air. They gain a lot of these call outs. One more on top of that. Artorius looking a little rusty, taking a long time to get any sort of meaningful damage, right? So far, yeah. only landing a 6 6 M. Oh, speaking I, of, he was waiting for it, an opportunity to get the counter hit 2H still. Maybe not as much damage as you'd like, but finally bringing Wavy a little bit over towards the corner. Uses the Brave counter to try and maintain the screen space. Going for the double slash, puts you into some more damage. Raging Strike to keep that damage. Yeah. Kaliman spending the meter on the Skybound art. Are you dead? Wait, no I really way. didn't think it would be enough, but the final slash. Oh my god, we're tied up on the rounds here. I was just waiting like maybe like a sliver of health, but no, nah, Artur just ate that alive. Siegfried definitely got that lethal interaction here. Once again, pull up after the flame wall. Brave counter just to create some Ooh. distance. That was sick. Don't we have the not reversal. seen that type of DP bait in uh, you know a little bit, at least not in this top eight. Wavy running up for the TP immediately goes past, and not only that, escapes the corner court too. Another brave counter, another dice to be able to be cast here. Going for a lot of these bar heavies to stop Arturius in his tracks. Yep. Trying to close the distance with these dashes. Here we go, run up, tap on the dope with the far L. Stand right on top of the trap, spot dodge, but again, Artorius, we've seen it from Coach Steve, we see it from Artorius as well. The 6-6M from Siegfried, such a good check on the traps, but Wavy checking the toes, the spot dodge escapes. Some more far heavies coming out here, gets called out by the kick, another raging strike. Was that supposed to be a brave counter and it just works? Like I don't know, oh my god, but they definitely used all their bravery there and that first game with no VP in the tank, game number one over to Wavy. Wavy standing on business right now with that first game, showing like, hey, that first set we played, that was all knowledge check. Exactly. That was all me that downloading all information. Data. Information for the next set after I beat these other players to get yeah. back to you. Exactly. I got to stay warm a little bit. I'll let you ice out in the winner side of Grands. Artorius taking a second, trying to reconsider. Okay, what is the game plan as we head to game number two? I think this is like very um, slept on, right? Like yeah. Taking your time before you hit that rematch button. Doing it, especially if you're lost, you can collect your cool, you yeah. know? It's very easy to try and think, oh, okay, I have to bring back this momentum. I have to go straight back into it to try and, you know, keep my cool. But sometimes you really just need to let yourself reset. But no, Wavy resetting the situation, escapes with the TP. Nice little side swap here and sets down the old seal. Bring us some more close heavies right onto the block string, calling out any sort of momentum. Finally, our trace finds a light, is able to convert it into geek to get out. Oh, dodge in that corner, bro. We try to go for the anti-air. Wavy delayed that for so long. I Wavy know. was waiting for the 2H. Waiting it out all your life, but finally the UDP waiting with the block. Artorias brings you over to the corner for a full confirm. Does this some more time. Another skybound art. There's one thing I've learned about Siegfried is that you are about to explode. All right, all right. Another round on the board here for Artorias. Doing it. Oh, just immediately goes for the far, far lights. Just be able to stuff out any sort of like dash up that you were going for. Ooh. 
Kato with the counter hit, tried to challenge after the 6XL. You have to escape sometime, but Wavy already down 50% HP, standing on the trap, trying to stand on business here. But still, oh my god, it took so long to actually detonate. Oh! Trying to live as long, hard as we can, stuck in this corner. Wavy's of pressure is insane. Goes right back in there with another grab. No traps are on the decks. So we can't get any combos off of it. Finally spends a BP. Eats out one of Wavy's, but she's going to let a second one rip on top of that. Ooh. We're sending a raw skybound art. Artrarius? Was it close enough so you're not going to get that animation? But hey, it was enough to build up some momentum. And you have three BP to play with. You can go for brave counters at this point. You can go for a raging strike. Anything you want. Wavy spending the last one on their deck. But we just let the raw DP rock. EX variety. But we saw the smile from Wavy. She's like, you would really DP them for a million dollars? He would. At Cross of Rock 2024? He really would. You though. got it like that? He got it like that, bro. Another <laughs> DP? We're closing his eyes to lock in. He's like, yeah, that was, uh, that was a bold move for me. And I'd do it again. And I'd do it again. Going straight back over to character select. Right, check um, it out real quick. One sec. Looks like we might have some technical issues. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, make sure we're all good before you head into game number three. Yeah. Why does Siegfried have that SVA? It is it is a very strong one, right? Because not yes. only is it able to, you know, have a lot of horizontal range, a lot of these projectile setups, it's very easy to, you know, catch up the setup of, of any move, regardless of the horizontal distance, right? So especially if all you need is one last hit to try and be able to seal out the round. If you're hovered over that easy input SVA, could be reps. Yeah. It's, it's something that you always got to be like on the lookout for just because you just eat so much damage from that nonsense. There's one thing that I would define Siegfried by is pretty much the damage that he does. Like it's like it's like if you put two characters in the same screen, right? Okay. Yeah. On one side, you got Siegfried. On the other side, you have Garan. Yeah. It's like they both dish out so much damage. But who's the one that's got the range? Exactly, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like we got the boot from Gran. You know he's able to he's make his way boot. out. He break dances a little bit. He's a little mobile. But, but like you're saying, Siegfried, he's he's got the Soul Calibur type sword, bro. That, yeah, yeah. It is scary with all the range behind it. And surprisingly, you know he's also pretty mobile as well. I think it's easy to look at you know Knight in the full suit of armor and be like, oh, surely he's a little bit slower. But Six XL still able to get you so much mobility. You know, advancing into those plus rings as well. Yeah. While we figure out the uh, controller issues here, guys, just letting you guys know we're still sitting here. Grand finals yes. of the crossover arc. This is a combination of WASD and Lunar Phase coming together Absolutely. once a year over here at OSNYC. Over in NYC, 50 Bowery Street. Really sick venue for people to come through, enter these tournaments, and just compete for the ages. Tons of people show up to this thing. Just yeah. be able to watch, to compete, to hang out to get drinks at the bar, anything yeah. they want. There's so much electricity here. There's one thing I definitely hear from every single employee at OS, uh -huh. and it's that the FGC scene is always electric when they're in the venue. Because this venue hosts all sorts of video game tournaments, right? They do, they do like, they've done Modern Warfare, they've done Valorant tournaments, they've done League of Legends tournaments. They've There's done a lot NBA, of variety, They've done yeah. NBA 2K, oh. but, <laughs> but like all sorts of tournaments, right? And they say no scene compares to FGC. Okay, Nothing okay. is like it. We gotta bring the hype, and I'm sure you guys in the chat can agree as well, so make sure to stop on by OSNYC. Yeah, even if you were, you know, you weren't able to come out to Crossover Work, all is well, at least you're tuning in for the chat right now, but also, you know, WASD Lives also happen here as well, you know, monthly, so if you guys ever get the opportunity, whether you're on the, you know, in the Tri-State area or on the East Coast, we would love to have you stop on by and get to meet that local scene as well. And you can see them on the camera right now, right? They're excited, waiting for this next match, and look at how many people cheering on their own here once again as we wait for grand finals to start back up yeah kind of chilling here we're getting a final answer yep. from panda Betic coming up here to try to help resolve the issue exactly. to on deck here yeah shout out production shout out to team as well making sure that everything is running all smooth for our players and of course for me and aussie to hang out on the mic and have an amazing time over with you guys all right all right let's restart that ps5 make sure everything is all good Okay, I just got word of what was going on. Wavy was that? saying the console felt laggy. Okay. So they're going to restart the system to see if that helps fix it. Gotcha. Okay. Sometimes it can be a heat issue, you know, just power cycle the PS5, make yeah. sure everything is all good. I mean, so I get it. Sometimes if you're like a PC player, for yeah. example, but and you it switch generally up, isn't an issue, right? So yeah. you're like, oh, okay, cool. It, 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 it takes, you know, it could be, there, like, especially with like Vanilla Grand Blue. Yeah, yeah. Vanilla Grand Blue, you could tell, you know. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of patches in this game to make them very similar in terms yeah. of feel for PC and PS5. Yeah. Yeah. 
But it, so far, um, that's the first we've heard about this from any player. Yeah. Um, so maybe Wavy just like not maybe just like happened late on. Maybe the PS5 be a little bit hot. You yeah. know. We, we are right at the end of the top eight as well, right? So yep. you know, if there was any time for it to you know start slowing down a little bit, it would make sense as we head into the end here. But we got the power cycle. We're heading right back into it. Load in to some Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising Action once again. Thank you guys for sticking around. We're gonna be heading right into game number three as soon as we get back in. And also, shout out to the viewers like you guys. Yeah. You guys are the reason we keep coming back here and put on this show because you guys want to watch this. Yes. But even if we had one viewer, we'd still put this on and just like exactly. watch some sick Grand Blue action. I mean, if you feel me. That's what I'm saying. And that's why I'm so glad we get, you know, to have crossover arc show you guys not only the New York scene, right, but everybody who took the time to travel out and represent mm. here. You know, it's so uh, it's very exciting as we head back into Grand Finals. Yeah. It's been a. Uh, Quite a privilege to be here for top eights yes. at this tournament, as well as for WASDs and for TNSs and so many tournaments, especially with the cast with you, Jay. Exactly. And uh, it's been a lot of fun to be on the Grand Blue scene. The Grand Blue scene is so loving, and I love being a part of it. Everyone's so chill with each other, and especially like in person. Everyone's just yeah. vibing. They want to play games. And but right now, this is not the time for vibes. No. Now is the time to compete. First place, three thousand plus dollars on the line, and you know these players want to try to get the bigger chunk of that. One to one in this race. Race to three. Let's get back into game three of Grand Finals. There you go. Make sure the buttons are all good. Might as well, you know, after the reset. Uh, yes. Just to check. All right. Looking good. Looking good. Should be testing it right now again. Just trying to figure out those buttons. Make sure they're hunky-dory. I mean, honestly, of course you button check to shift the lags there. Yeah, yeah. We're finding answers here. We're still... It's good? Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. it, look, it looks like there doesn't seem to be an issue with the lag. I think we're okay, yeah. Looking pretty uphill, uh, pretty downhill from here, you know? Come on, Notorious, <laughs> win this for Siegfried. Yeah, the Siegfried bros representing in the chat right now. So many Siegfried bros, bro. Like, I'm about to be a Vayne bro, you feel me? I want that character to come out so bad. I, I might be a Beatrix bestie. Dude, April A Beatrix 2nd. sister, even. I know, your, your day will come. I'm just but, saying but right now, Vane's we gotta worry first. about Vayne. Vayne's first, bro. Like, well, let him cook. He's on his way. He's let on him his have way, his bro. moment in the spotlight. He deserves it. I can't wait till chat's like, dude, I can't stand Vayne. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand this Vayne guy. You know, I'm so sick of these Vayne's. Vayne's is killing this game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Vayne is killing Grand Blue Fantasy <laughs> versus <laughs> Rising. <laughs> All right. Back on into it. Game number three of Grand Finals. Let's get back into the action. Once again, the immediate slash out from Artorias. Knows that Wavy is trying to explode from the round start, so catches you in your tracks. One more time, another brave counter just to apply some more pressure. Gets the, steals the turn in the process. Yeah, a little bit too far for the EX Beyblade to get the wall bounce, but still able to find another hit. Wavy really has you up against the wall right now. Brave counter to clear the trap. Okay. Put you right back into the blender, get a lot of damage in the process. Wavy is no stranger to just spending that BP as no. soon as possible. Like exactly. She, she's a greedy player who wants their turn every time. Exactly. You might as well let it rock, right? The resources can come back once you build up that super. And a lot of times we're seeing the routing into the meat grinder as well, so might as well use it before you lose it. Brave Counter, once again, didn't even need the chip damage. It's far H for the round. That far heavy gets so much mileage out of every Cagliostro under the yep. sun. That move is oppressive. Ooh. Speaking of, uh, you know, impressive moves, one that really controls the airspace, of course, that EX Flame Wall. Well, we be back down to Earth. A light confirmed from Artorias, but more importantly, now we're back up against the wall. The mash out with the far H. Okay, Wavy. Had the spear ready to rock on top. You know, Artorias going for those two L's to get rid of those uh, seals on the ground. Yeah. Because, you know, once those are gone, then they're no longer a threat, whether you're trying to play neutral or if you get grabbed. But I love the air to air. Damn, I like to confirm off of it as well. Back up against the corner. Spent the 50. Now, Wavy down quite a bit of meter. Artorias looking for one more hit to take out that DP with the super and kill. All right. Ooh. Okay. I mean, Artorias trying to go for the crouching heavy again. I feel like Cags are on the search for that. What happened? Caught out with the ultimate seal. Wavy. No BP to her name, but it's all good because we kill before it matters. TP for the second game. Okay, now we're seeing we're up two to one and wavy side. I mean, there was a little bit of a time gap there, so Artorias has got to get back into that hot seat, try to get something cooking before we dive into game four. Yep. Really trying to lock in. What is the game plan before we head back into it? All good. Take your time to recompose yourself as we head into the next one. Wavy one game away for the reset. The seals again with the spear on top of that. Again, this character thrives.
thrives off of full screen against the likes of Siegfried especially, right? Because Siegfried does have that big-ass projectile he can throw he does, full yeah. screen. But the thing is, Wavy can just make that instantly on top of you. Exactly. Go over with the air TP, which sometimes we've been seeing get caught out on the way on over. Speaking of, catches out the attempt at the throw, bait out. It's a huge whiff off of the old seal. Wavy cashing out on so much damage. Arturius looking a little desperate to get something cooking with that yeah. grab, right? Like it runs up there, solid jump coming out from Wavy. Wasn't able to get too much off of it in the process and now stuck in a very bad spot. There's a trap right above you. Ooh. So we're just gonna let the Super Skybound out. You're about to eat so much damage. BP, gone. Seals, gone. Wavy, now in the hot seat. Ooh. On the run up, the mash out with the 5L. Wavy had the life to live. So still. Now we're on reset point. Wavy takes one more round. We go to a true finals right afterwards. Yes. All right, set up the EX flame wall. Nothing found up the two. You loses your turn and losing a little bit of life stuck here in the corner as well. Powering up two, getting two power ups in the process. And Trace is trying to destroy this child once he gets one hit. Far H can't get a conversion from too far away. Doesn't want to commit to the raging chain right afterwards. Dragon's blood. He's got the double stacks. He's pissed. Goes straight into Are the super dead? wavy. No way, right? No, I no don't way, think so. Right? I think we're stuck with a sliver. Okay, I was going to say. But still, only one BP to your name. That's the UDP rock. Oh. Uh -oh. That's not great. Oh, 6 6 health. That is a you know awkward conversion coming out from wavy. Maybe not what you wanted. And now, shift damage territory. So Arturius can count his blessings with that reversal, right? Because yeah. he actually activated the trap before Wavy could get a hit. So Wavy wasn't actually able to put that trap into mid-combo. I see, I yeah. see. So, but All now right. we're at chip Ooh. kill damage. We just run in there and do a DP. Could oh, do no. it. Orthodox or projectile. But Wavy's going to play the keep away game at this point because has to hold on to that one health for as long as possible. Arturius trying to find that answer. Ambo getting caught in the bunker between all of these traps. Ooh. Finally finds the answer. Runs in there. Gets the DP with the fist bump right out there. He's still alive in grand finals. So run up DP. We see the smile from Wavy. She's like, all right, you got me. I tried to hold on my best. But speaking of the bump from the round start. Arturius with momentum is Horrifying, yeah, because he runs in there and he just starts playing aggressive as Helen goes for like the most crazy options. You got some clash, maybe going for the immediate grab. Yep, oh, the clash, fastest option you got, just trying to pull on through once again. The double 6 XL make it three. No, but that's the golden throne on the dome. And we got the seals to extend the combo, get some new routes on the table, puts you right back in. We're letting that reversal rip every day of the week. 6 XL open you up. Not going to convert into a super just yet. Want to hold on to that meter for just special occasion. Brave counter not only did it get the turn. Whoa! Oh, you are done. Good night, Arturius. Evening up the set. He's clapping. He is hyped. He wants that first place finish. You're not, he doesn't want to give her the reset. The big bump. The crowd is going wild. I'm sure you guys can hear it on the crowd back right now. And what we're seeing from Arturius, right, between some of those games in the middle, closing his eyes, trying to recompose himself. But now, locking back in, trying to seal it out before we head on over to this tournament reset. Dude. Maybe one more time, chilling. Wants to get uh, re regain that composure. Wants yep. that reset so badly. Is Arturius going to be able to give it to her? Or is Arturius about to close down this tournament right here, right now? All right, lock in and clock in. It's time to get to work. EX Flame Wall once again into the 6-6M. That's a brave counter used it from Wavy to try and escape. Not trying to be too greedy about it, right? Because you've seen Artorius really catch out the approach a lot of times. Throwing out some more projectiles. You just got trade, you know, that's yeah. all good in the neighborhood. Wavy finds the opening, puts you into the corner one more time. You're back against the wall. You got to give it your all. What is the answer? DP once more. Always the answer. It's like, hey, you're, you're giving a multiple choice question, bro. He's going to be circling D for a reversal every single time. Exactly. None of the above. I don't care about the trap situation here. Does get caught up with the two outraging strike. Wavy not going to be able to kill, but really putting Artorias in a rough spot. Okay. 6XL, Wavy playing very Ooh. patient, finds the opening. We're holding block, mixing it up on top of that. Could hold the block button in the process to kind of defeat that mix up. Oh my god, we're calling out the spot time. Oh. It was still active? That was still active? The SSBA is good, but not good enough. Still able to avoid it. The invul frames lasting Wavy long enough for the full punish. And now we're on reset point. Okay, Atreus going in one more time. Let's it all rip. Ooh. Even with the reversal, we're getting a little bit overzealous, and Wavy is starting to play way more patient. Wait for Atreus to overcommit to get a punish right afterwards. There we go. 15 meter for the ultimate seal. Nothing found here for Wavy. Caught out with the 2L. 
Six six L trying to get the pressure back. Six six L out of the traps. Actually, Artorias, no fear. Okay. Going for a close heavy on the block one more time. Artorias throwing out the projectile, going for the double slash. Yep. Catches the feet, bops you up. Brave counter to give us some close distance. Ooh. You're taking the 50% more damage. Artorias brings us to the final round of Grand Finals. Is Artorias about to take home this tournament, or is Wavy getting a reset? We're about to find out. One more round. This could be the last one, or it could be the start of another set. Artorias immediately on the aggro, trying to take out the traps with 6-6-M. Back into the corner, EX Orchid. One more time, gets the bravery, gets two stacks in the process, has to get out of dodge, spends the meter. Oh no, raging no strike, not gonna get the pickup! Oh, just a little bit too late, ultimate seal takes a turn back from Wavy, but Grave Counter, spend the BP to get it right no back! No way! Counter hit, close it, and Artorias is your winner of Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising at Crossover Arc 2024! Artorias! He was down two to one. Two to one! And he brought it back. Nail biters every single time. But once again, a big shout out to Wavy. Make some noise for New Head's own Wavy as well out at number two. Still amazing work to Artorias, your champion for today's Grand Blue. What a freaking sick top eight, dude. That was so fun. Yeah, we saw multiple sick freeds. Yeah, we saw multiple Cagliostros, yeah. but it was still mad fun to watch. I, this game's so sick, dude. <laughs> I'm a big Grand Blue fan, and I'm sure you guys, even if you weren't before, just tuned in on in. Oh, what's going on over at Crossover Arc? What's happening over here? I'm sure you guys are fans as well. Some amazing gameplay. A big shout out to everybody in that top eight playing their absolute hearts out. And man, I think we also have a medal ceremony coming up in just a sec to make sure all of our uh, you know victors are congratulated. Yeah. So let's see. Well, we'll see that in just a second, yeah. man. But like Grand Blue, one more time, dude. This game. Dude, I, I can't wait for the patch. We, we have a yep. big patch coming up. This game has not been out of balance patch since it's released, which, is, which has been about four months, which, you know, I kind of like, where it's yeah. like, let the game simmer, you know, see what's happening. Give it a little bit of time you to Get some settle. data, right, and then, especially after right. the tour, but let's yeah. Bring it down a let's bit. Let's bring it down a bit. Let him know, Panda, what's good? Let's bring him down a bit. Let me have top three up on the stage, please. Okay, Grand Blue. All I can say is that this Grand Finals was hella crazy. It's a toxic ass game now. <laughs> That's crazy. Bad All enough. right. That's what we do. <laughs> In third place, my friend and probably New York's best oomphy, Hazel! In second place, New Heads, Wavy! <laughs> and for first place in his second top eight, give it up for Crossover Art 2024 Grand Blue Wagon Champion, Antonio! Trophy. It's really heavy. Champion. Look at him go. Dude. What else can you say, man? What a sick top eight of Grand Blue. Thank you guys for so much for tuning in. But before you go, we got some stuff to talk about. Yeah. We're, gonna, we're gonna show that match here, bro. One more time, match here, exclamation point. Go ahead and donate some more money to that prize pool. Give it a little bit more money towards these players. They put on quite the show for us. All you gotta do is type in exclamation point match here and head on over to that link. All the codes have been claimed, so thank you guys so much for claiming those codes. But if you got some extra money, we'll be happy to take that off your hands too. 
Yeah, and speaking of, you got if you got some extra money and you want a new way, a creative way to try and uh, you know support us as well, we have the merch as well. You guys have seen it. We got the Kaguya, the Siegfried, the Anila, and the Kuan as well. And even if you guys aren't coffee or tea drinkers, we also have these in shirt designs as well. And some other merch that you guys, I'm sure, would love. So make sure to stop on by Empirist.club, pick up some merch, and support Crossover Arc 2024. I know a lot of people are thinking about the next tournaments like Combo Breaker or Evo, but we got Slashback coming up, coming up April 6th, so very soon going to happen over in San Jose, California over at the guild house tons of anime games tons of games in general but you're gonna notice grand blue fantasy versus rising one of those games you're definitely gonna check out some of the heavy hitters heading over to that tournament hell yeah and speaking of other tournaments we also got a big shout out for boston blue beat i'm sure you guys are excited for this summer where they are hosting beach episode campout so that's going to be at the western waltham on august 10th to 11th of course we got grand blue and so many other of your favorite games so make sure to stop on by you can register at start.gg slash beach and i believe early registration is going to be ending at the end of the month so make sure to get that in as soon as you can save a little bit of money and stop on by to see the bbb homies well, guys, that's it for us. Thank you one more time for tuning into this. My name is Austin Levista. And my name is Jay Sue. It's been an absolute joy hanging out with you on the mic. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed Grand Blue Top 8. And make sure to stay tuned. We got Uni 2 Top 8 coming up later as well. So we will see you for that. We'll see you once again. That's what I'm talking about, baby! Yeah!